themselves for army basic training, thus increasing your survival rate. Welcome to the Team Sports On Demand podcast. My name is Lewis, your local New York Army National Guard full-time recruiter and part-time drill sergeant in New York City. That is by day, but in my free time, like now, I come on here to create videos on joining the Army and getting ready for Army Day training. Disclaimer, this is not sponsored or endorsed or supported by DOD, the United States Army, or the Army National Guard, and the express in this video and others is that of my own opinions, experiences, insights, tips, and tricks, and that of others. And here we go. What is going on, y'all? Welcome back here to Team Sports On Demand. My name is Lewis, your host with the most. And here on this channel, I post a ton of Army basic training tips, recruiting, and other Army-related videos, primarily focusing on helping you navigate the joining process so that you can make a well-informed decision on whether or not joining the Army is a good fit for you for your reasons and your reasons alone, and to prepare yourselves both mentally and physically for army basic training disclaimer real quick this channel is not supported and uh, sponsored or endorsed by the department of defense the u.s army or the army national guard what i'm expressing here on this channel is a personal page expressing my personal experiences insights tips and tricks and things that i would like to share with you uh, from a personal level all right full-time i am a national guard and uh, National Guard recruiter and part-time drill sergeant, but on my free time, I create, uh, as previously described, uh, those particular topics. So that being said, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. If that's what you're into, consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon, turning on all notifications so you don't miss any videos that I post or when I go live like I am right now. So welcome to the Team Source squad. If you're new here, let me know which state you are tuning in from. Otherwise, if you're one of my loyal and I mean loyal, Team Swartz squad members. You know what to do. Drop that hashtag, Team Swartz. And real quick in the chat box, let me know how the audio is. Is it skipping? Is it good? Is it horrible? Uh, I've been having issues for the past couple weeks. Appreciate y'all. Much love. And uh, with that being said, uh, rumor mill. This is a rumor. So if you're looking to, to join the military and you failed the ASVAB, and let's say even with the current 09 mic option, with a 21 or better on the ASVAB. Rumor mill has it, not sure if and when official information will be coming out, but I hear that they may be dropping that 21 percentile requirement down to a 16, which would be equivalent to a normal typical cat four. If you don't know what cat four is, you'll find it conveniently linked in the chat box or the description down below to learn more about it. But, um, Without going further in detail on that, just know that if you fail the ASVAB, 21 or better right now, you have options. It may drop down to 16, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Now let's get started with the show. And before I actually get started, let me um, explain some of the rules <laughs> of this stream, okay? So real quick, I go from the oldest to the latest or newest comment. So I'm not gonna skip anybody. If it looks like I skip you, it's a possibility that there is a block word or phrase and it's not showing up on my screen. I do not purposefully ignore anyone unless you're being disrespectful. And with that, in that case, I'll just block you when I eventually see it, but I do not skip anyone. So if you happen to still be in the stream and somebody's like, how come he's not answering my question or you see them repeating themselves multiple times, please do me a solid, let them know. I'll get to them shortly. And uh, when you get a super chat like here with Luis Rodriguez, thank you very much. First of all, one of my most loyal uh, squad members, team source squad members, he said, hashtag team source. Thank you for that. Great stuff, as always. If I join the Coast Guard Auxiliary, can I still join the National Guard so I can get the best of both worlds, sort of speak? So with that being said, I'm not 100% so sure, but if there is some sort of contractual obligation as an auxiliary in the Coast Guard, then I would probably say that is a no. But to get a 100% solid response, I would talk to your... Uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary to see what they say and on my end I will look into it and if you reach out to me Sometime tomorrow. I'll see what I can get uh, as far as addressing this accurately But again, thank you for always supporting my channel appreciate you and when I get super chats like that when I'm done driving the point of the latest comment or question and then I go to the super chat like this guy uh, Colby Smith, right? 
I've been to MEPS and got temporarily disqualified for ADHD. I've been off meds for almost two years and my GPA without them is 3.6. What are the chances of getting accepted uh, to join? And my answer in response to this is it's actually pretty good. And I did a video that would be beneficial to you. It's linked in the description area and I'm also gonna shoot it for you into the chat box for you to watch either during or after this stream and hopefully you find it valuable but yes it, lately as long as you get this started now like the current guidance for add adhd and anxiety and all that good stuff has been extended until june of this year so do not sit on it get started follow those tips and uh good luck on your uh medical waiver and may the we medical waiver gods forever be in your favor but again to address your exact question i can't guarantee that you'll get in but you're in a really good position uh, to get approved and to join the army. Okay. And, uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate you. And thank you for tuning in. Let me see if there's any more. Uh, no, there isn't any more. Okay. So I'm going to go right back up to the top, starting off with Steven Galindo with the hashtag team Swartz. What happens if before you go to drill and basic, you gained weight, like 17 pounds. Don't worry about it. As of right now, currently they are not double checking your height and weight before you ship out to army basic training. So with that being said, do everything within your power to lose weight before leaving. Cut back on your calories, cut out all the sugary drinks, any and all snacks, drink a gallon of water a day. In fact, what I would suggest is kind of like a, a fat loss hack. Drink a gallon of water for the day before you consume any other type of beverages. And if you don't finish that gallon of water, well, guess what? You don't drink anything else. Obviously, steer clear of any fried foods, fast foods, try to eat whole foods or healthy, otherwise a healthy diet, okay? But the biggest thing is restricting your uh, calor uh, calorie intake to about 2,000 to 2,400 calories per day. Try to work, get in 30 to 45 minutes of a workout. Doesn't matter what the intensity level is, just get moving for 45 minutes and you should be all right, all right? We got Young Savage back in the house. What's up, my guy? Help. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about with the hashtag Team Swords. Appreciate you as always. Been a while, Sarn. Graduated basic February 24th and head to AIT Friday. Man, that took a long time to get shipped out, huh? But congratulations. Keep up the grind and the hustle. Continue to do great things and good luck in the next chapter of your Army career. We got Yasir with the hashtag Team Swords. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you very much. We got Thomas Drake, one of my loyal Team Swords channel members. So if you're on a desktop and you see that join icon you can join that and all that good stuff it's just another way to support me and uh i'm going to be bringing in some additional features that only channel members will have access to access to like live streams maybe even bring you onto the live stream and have a one-on-one -on -one session together uh discussing about anything that you want to know about the army and so on and so forth so thank you very much time straight for being a and continuing to be a channel member and thank you so much again. Paul Wilson, what's up? Rumor on the Army upping the age limit and to what age? So Rumor Mill says they may be increasing it to the 44th birthday with no waiver required. Now, no official information has come down the pipeline yet. We were told about two to three weeks ago that it would be announced possibly in about three weeks or so. I can only uh, share with it when I get it, but you know, on this channel, I will share the update as soon as I get it. So, stu you know, st stay tuned and uh, don't change that bat channel. You know what I'm saying? Jaden Contreras, another channel member for Team Swartz. <laughs> Thank you so much for the hashtag Team Swartz. And uh, I, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, do me a favor because sometimes we get some sidebar conversations going on in the chat box and just to help me help you. When you have a question or even a comment directly to me, start it with a Q, just like Jaden did here. So thank you for reminding me. It just makes it easier so I'm not like wasting 20, 30 seconds scrolling, 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 looking for something that pertains to me uh, addressing somebody here. So appreciate that. And he asks, when you start to attend drill, are you issued gear to uh, keep your possession like the Army Reserves? So... No, you're not issued gear. The only thing that like in the National Guard that you're, you're possibly going to get issued is at, at the very minimum, a water bottle, right? So you're going to be attending the recruit sustainment program. All right, I'm going to drop the video in the chat box. It's also going to be conveniently located in the uh, description area for you to check out later on or even right now if you want. Prefer you stay here. <laughs> but with that being said, 
some states, depending on their funding, may issue you a uh, a non a non or unofficial uniform, like a t-shirt or a combination of a t-shirt and shorts, maybe even some pants, sweatshirt, so on and so forth. It really depends on what they do for that unique specific state. So yeah, no real army issued equipment. You're gonna get all that stuff when you get to the training site. Now we we were doing at one point like you um, legitimate PT uniforms, but we stopped doing it because the reason being is by the time we get your sizes and we put in with the supply sergeant your sizes to order them, a lot of times you're shipping off to basic training before your uh, PT uniform comes in the mail, you know what I'm saying? And be issued to you before the next drill. That's why typically like we don't order uniforms for you, but you're gonna get all that stuff when you get to basic training, but good question, thank you. We got another super chat coming in here from Michael Dio to Tal Levy. I think you made fun of me <laughs> last week on Instagram. I think it was you. Uh, but thank you so much for supporting Chan. I appreciate you. Question is, can an Army National Guard soldier do federal OCS? And absolutely. As long as funding is there from the big Army, as long as they're willing to pay for it, then yes, uh, federal OCS is an option. I did a video. You could check it out here. Not sure if you saw that yet but you could definitely go check out that there all right appreciate you thank you so much again for supporting the channel moving back up to where i last left off we got will witt with the hi what's up what's up what's up thank you for tuning in harsh Singh, do you need a certain score to get a bonus yes typically you will need a 50 or better for any type of incentive whether that's a enlistment bonus student loan repayment program things of that nature okay what is not required is let's say you're doing a quick ship you're shipping out within 45 days if there's a quick ship bonus that is available and being offered currently again uh policies are constantly changing but with that said right now as long as you score a 31 or better then you can get like a quick ship bonus if it's if, you, if there is a quick ship bonus, like right now, the National Guard is not offering a quick ship bonus, but we do have an off peak bonus. And what that means is as long as you can ship out to training before May 15th, then you can get a, a off peak bonus, meaning that's like when we're not as busy at the training sites and we're getting ready for the summer surge. So that is your off peak bonus. And that uh, as of right now, currently only need a 31 or better on the ASVAB. Good question like that we got sergeant first class bites he uh the uh greatest of all time the goats just showing showing support to my bow i appreciate you tuning in man appreciate it and thank you so much for the uh insights and uh recommendations for canva and all that good side. i really got to look into that more but appreciate you we got another super chat coming in from bubba joe won't sign for anything other than mos i want recruiter is saying we'll try his best to get it for me what exactly can he do last time we looked after my as 15 tango was not available can he do anything let me know bubba joe and I'll, I'll pay attention to the chat box on my cell phone but let me know if you're going active duty guard or reserve and i'll tell you kind of more or less some additional insights to that question i would say it is possible but it depends on what component of the army you're trying to get into Appreciate you and thank you so much. Let's see, going back up to where I left off, we got Mr. and Mrs. Cruz. My husband wants to know, how does one get an interview with you? He's at Fort Jackson and finishing in about four weeks. Interview for what? It sounds like he's already contracted. Um, hmm. Yeah, let me know what you mean, but you could reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, if he's not joining the guard, you can hit me up on Team Swartz. If he's looking to join, go check out this other recruiter. Recruiting ain't easy on, on Instagram. And you can shoot that fella a DM. <laughs> kind of looks like me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully your husband is doing well. And uh, hopefully he passes training and all that good stuff. We got Matthew Friedis with the what's up, Sarn? Hey, what's up, man? Hope everything's going well with the uh, Honor Guard. I think that's you. I think that's you. Honor Guard. Or not Honor Guard. Um, Honor Guard. How is Honor Guard going? Appreciate you. Bubba Joe says going active duty. So when you're going active duty, uh, Bubba Joe, let me just go back down to uh, your comment. 
So when it comes to active duty, positions come and go. And it sounds like being 15 Tango is important to you. There's really nothing your recruiter can do except wait it out until that position becomes available. So have some honest dialogue with your recruiter and be like, yo, man, appreciate you doing everything for me. I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to join, but I'm not going to join until 15 Tango becomes available. All right. And just let them know, like, I'm all yours. Like, I'm going to join, but I won't join until I get 15 Tango. As long as you're not financially strapped and you can wait it out, make him let, let him know that the urgency is not on your end. The urgency is on his end because you got to understand we as recruiters, we want to put people in as fast as possible, right? We're, we don't want to sit on anyone. Not because we want to rush the process. It's because we have leadership above us going wah, 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 wah in our ear. When is this person going down? When is this person going down? When is this person going down? What is the holdup? Talk them into another MOS. Talk them into this. Talk them into that. They don't obviously want to join. So talk them into this. And if they don't want to join, then F them. You know what I mean? So leadership can be extremely extremely annoying so as long as you're committed to that mos and you are otherwise eligible and committed to that mos you're going active duty so you're gonna want to do what it is that you want to do if you were going guard or reserve then i would have a different response for you but you're going active duty so all i can say is your recruiter can't do anything until it becomes available so i would just tell your recruiter hey listen i'm gonna follow up with you on a weekly basis when that position becomes available, I am all yours. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Good luck. And um, thank you for uh, tuning in. All right. So let me go back up to where I was. Hang on. Excuse me. I'm still trying to figure out where I was. Oh, yeah, Freitas. Okay. So we got Juan Gotti talking sports. Have you got any more feedback from people that went through the 09 Mike program as that version? Every person that I've sent down to the 09 Mike option have been flourishing. Everyone's doing well. I haven't gotten any negative feedback other than one soldier not getting the MOS of choice. And before he left, we were instructed by our command that we would have to have this dialogue before they left of knowing what MOS is that they're pre-qualified for, that they're interested in, so that in the event that when they do pass the ASVAB, we can start working on the uh, vacancy request for the job that they want. But we have, like, they stressed upon us that we only have less than 24 hours to make this happen. So we have to have this already decided upon. But they didn't even do that. Like at the training, I don't even know who or how they're actually processing it. But they're literally giving them a, a list of MOSs and saying, these are your choices. Sign it or or be discharged. So that's like the only negative that I'm getting out of the program. And that could be a pro or a con for a lot of you. But you got to understand when you go into this program, beggars can't be choosers. Hate to say it like this. You're not qualified. So that's kind of like the risk of doing this program. Yes, we're going to help you. You're going to join. The opportunity is there. But know what to expect and have that expectation in mind and hopefully everything goes in your favor and yeah. So, but more to follow. When my soldiers come back from training, I will for sure interview them and put that interview on YouTube. You can best believe that that's what's going to happen. We got Caitlin back in the house. I have some swollen lymph nodes that have been swollen for about six months now. Will I need an all clear on those to get through MEPS as far as you know? My recruiter doesn't seem to be worried. As long as it's a, uh, a lymph node that is benign and not malignant and it's not hindering you or like limiting or restricting you from any type of physical activity and you are not experiencing any pain, then in my personal opinion i think it could go either way it really really depends on the meps that you're processing with and what that cmo feels so when it comes to meps there is a level or a baseline of what they can and cannot approve and what's going on is these are civilian contracted doctors that get minimal training and the issue that's going on is some MEP cmos are either super over 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 strict some are super, super, super too loose. And some of them are just 
right. Okay. So it really depends on whether your CMO like approves just about anything or they don't approve anything. So hopefully it works out in your favor and may the MEPS gods forever be in your favor. All right. But good luck to you and uh, definitely keep me posted. All right. We got Will Witt saying they're checking GPA for what? Uh, so, yeah. So if you got like ADHD and stuff like that, yes, they will ask you or you should definitely bring up your GPA. Because if you have a high GPA and you had ADHD and get the, the like when you watch that medical waiver uh, best practices and tips video that I posted in the chat box. If you, if you guys don't know what you're doing uh, or, or just tuning in, don't know what I'm talking about. I did a medical best practices and tips video. But yes, getting letters from your professors, your high school teachers, coaches, maybe even employers or coworkers that you work with basically saying that, yes, although you may have ADHD, you perform like an average normal person with no additional assistance or, you know, whatever, and that you are otherwise a good asset to the company, whatever. But go check out that video. Go to more into detail, but good luck to you. Michael Diotalevi. Greetings, Sergeant Swartz. Uh, thank you. It's Lewis here. It's Lewis. All right. No official titles here. All right. Thank you. I don't feel like getting in trouble. Uh, but thank you so much for your service. Could you provide some information on the Army National Guard's Mountain Warfare School and how to qualify for it? Unfortunately, I do not know nothing about this option. I know it exists. I believe from previous conversations it's in colorado could be wrong but if you google it i'm pretty sure you'll find some basic information on it and you could probably find out more before i even get around to to looking that up and getting that information for you well, i appreciate you jane Contreras also says uh can you attend state ocs or accelerate ocs within 90 credit hours or is that a waiverable with federal ocs so with federal ocs you must have already obtained your four-year degree as previously described in that ocs video that i posted but if you want to do the state ocs or the accelerated ocs then yes all you need is 90 college credit hours but you won't get promoted or uh yeah promoted or commissioned rather to a second lieutenant until you achieve your four year degree. Just throwing that out there for you, but thank you. And again, thank you for being a channel member. Luigi Pasqua, how difficult is it to transfer from the guard to active duty? I am having a difficult time getting an age waiver for OCS in Las Vegas, Nevada, and considering the guard to get into OCS. I think there's like two different questions there. You're asking me, and it kind of is kind of like confusing because like, do you want to go active duty or do you want to go OCS? I'm going to be paying attention to the comments as I'm responding to this, but let me know if you're trying to go active duty or OCS, like which one's more important to you. So anyhow, the guard to active duty, I did a video on that. That'll go into more detail, but this video will describe exactly what you need to do. But you have to understand right now that every branch of the military is struggling to reach its end strength or mission or quota for the year. With that said, they're trying to retain and keep everything or everyone as possible. Like they're not trying to release anybody. They're not trying to discharge anybody. Like there's like waivers for just about anything. I'm not saying that I you know all the waivers are going to get approved or whatever, but they're not trying to release anybody if they can help it. So my tips in that video, as far as like making it a financial hardship to go active rather than, oh, I just want to go active or whatever. But um it's going to be a challenge and you're going to have to exercise extreme patience when trying to wait to go active duty. So follow the tips in that video. You need a DD form 368. So you're going to have to go see an active duty recruiter. They'll complete that form with you. You will scan it. You will email it to all the people I describe in that video and follow up with them on a weekly basis to see what's going on with that. Expect to do a face-to-face uh, -face interview during drill. Might even get counseled with a DA form 4856 so on and so forth so good luck and uh definitely keep me posted and if you have any other questions shoot it in the chat box here or direct message me on instagram at team swartz but good luck to you colby smith says 11 bravo active oh shoot i don't know what that was in reference oh about adhd yeah doesn't matter same answer luigi pasqua says 34 okay so at federal is uh gonna be a no-go for you Go check out my video. I'll post it here again just in case you weren't here earlier in the stream.
Oh man, that sucks. Keyboard's dead. Next. Uh, OCS. Dang it. So this is why you're supposed to do your PCI, PCI, whatever it's called, PC, whatever. Hey, that's hot. Preventive checks. There we go. Whoop. So the next question is, so Khan... Conquistador, interesting name. If I may say so myself. If I sign a six year contract, do I get a $20,000 bonus? I'm assuming. And would that be combined with the uh, MOS bonus? Huh? What the heck? What are you asking, my friend? I thought you meant like, t yeah, you're going to have to uh, explain, your explain yourself. What? 20K what? So if you're going guard or reserve, the maximum you can get with a cash enlistment bonus is $20,000 if you're going guard or reserve. If you're going active duty, they have various options to where you can max out bonuses up to $50,000 between the MOS, how fast you ship out, if you get any um, additional like high-speed schools like airborne, air assault, duty station, so on and so forth. But I'm not sure what you mean by do I get 20, 20K and then combine that with a bonus. Not in the Guard or Reserve. It's one or the other. It's either the student loan repayment program or the bonus. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Food for thought. All right. We got Goji Petrosan. Question number one. Can I can't swim and who want a hand? Whoop. All right. I can't swim and want to go to the U.S. Army or the Marine Corps. Both are very good options, I may say so. Instructors will teach me. No, I or I need to do this before serving. So the Army doesn't require you to swim. All right, unless you're trying to become like a combat scuba person or whatever that MOS is called. But if you go Marine Corps, Navy for sure. Marine Corps, not really sure if there's a swim test. Again, I'm not in the Marine Corps. I'm in the Army. But if they require you to swim, then they're not going to teach you to swim. You're going to have to need to know how to swim before you get there. Just throwing that out there for you. Julie or July. Julie, I, I meant July. Does spouse of the National Guard soldier get education benefits or is it only for the soldier? It is only for the soldier. So if you want to, you know, stand beside your spouse, standing tall, looking good and uniform, then yes, you can get your own benefits. Guy or girl guy or gal right but uh yeah so after six years of service currently right now the guidance is if you want to transfer your post 9 11 gi bill from the soldier to their dependent whether it's a spouse child or a combination of thereof or even multiple dependents you got to do at least six years after the six year anniversary you must have at least four years left in your contract to complete a 10 year time span so after six years, you need to extend your contract for a minimum of four years to hit that 10 year requirement before you can transfer that benefit to your spouse and or your dependent. Make sense. So good luck to you. Appreciate you. And uh, hope that works out for you. Colby Smith. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. We got question number two coming in for Gogi, Goji or Gogi. I have a Russian high school diploma. Uh, it will be enough for U.S. Army. I think you meant will it. Uh, do I need to have a GED? No, you do not need to have a GED. So your Russian high school. So it, hopefully you have official high school transcripts to to go with your diploma. But we can get that. Um, e probably going to need to get translated and then evaluated. And as long as that meets the high school equivalency requirements, then you'll be rated as a high school graduate and you'll be good to go okay the one i use that is accepted for the army at least is this uh foreign international services education evaluation uh program it looks like i misspelled foreign so let me fix that real quick <laughs> all right coming into you right now so that was at 1912 so go, go here. 
1913. Okay. I'm a little bit parched. Oh, shoot. Spilled some coffee. Hang on one second. I don't know why that's stuck. All right, all right, all right. So we got a super chat coming in from Damien Strom. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot to me, and it goes right back into the channel. And uh, says 368, they told me might have to change my job. If you're going to a different branch of service, then yeah. So if you're going active duty, you're going to have to follow the prior service business rules, okay? These are the only MOSs and opportunities that will be afforded to you, providing that vacancies or openings are available to you at the time of contracting for active duty. If you're going guard or reserve, it's up to like the geographical area, vacancies or permissions to go into an excess slot. And depending on your rank, there may be additional permissions that would be uh, required to obtain prior to contracting. So if you don't know, uh, if you want to know like, based on your line scores what jobs uh job skills you qualify for or mos is rather because you know you're probably service so you know what i'm talking about i'm going to post this video it says what jobs do i pre-qualify for after i pass the asvab test uh the ignore the demonstration from the goarmy.com website that i display in the video we go to the description box i have a uh, excel sheet on steroids that if you download it to your desktop you plug in your line scores let me know or let it know that you're a u.s citizen and or if you have a driver's license and that will show you based on your test results alone and your citizenship and driver's licenses which mos's or and or opportunities would be afforded to you based on your results and that will give you a rough idea of where you stand and what you could ask your recruiter from there. And then again, bounce that off of the prior service business rules. All right. So hopefully that addresses your question and concern. And again, thank you so much for the super chat. All right. All right. So we got Victoria Austin, hashtag Team Sports. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Question. I ship off to boot camp in April. I am excited. My dad, however, is not. What advice do you have for people who have people in their life who are doubtful of the success of boot camp? I enlisted this young lady once, and I kid you not. Mom was supportive and concerned and, again, supportive of her daughter going. The father supported her decision but did not believe that it was a good decision it was a waste of time they were from the dominican republic and for some reason he thought very very low of the army and to be honest with you i didn't let that bother me just like i tell everyone i think that anyone joining the military can benefit from being in the army. But I don't think that the army could benefit from just anybody joining the military. You have to want this. You have to put forth your best foot forward, give 200% and you should have a positive experience. But um, you take that negativity and I'm not saying that they're being like toxic about it, but take that negativity to prove them wrong. And this young lady that I contracted completely changed her father's perspective of the army and because of her work ethic she advanced in rank relatively quickly she has a full-time job now within the army national guard she makes almost 60 70 thousand dollars a year um as a staff sergeant now in the army national guard i, I think her, her salary is about that with the housing allowance and everything but she's she's killing it she's doing great and her father and her parents are very, very proud of her. So hopefully they um, support you for the most part. Don't let it sweat you. Don't sweat about it. Don't stress things that you can't change. Just believe in yourself. Put your best foot forward. Have really, really good work ethic. And I'm telling you, good things will happen if you work hard for it. Is it going to be easy? No, it's never easy. All right. 
But with the right attitude and the work ethic, I, I'm telling you, you're going to go far. And I appreciate this question. And uh, I don't get a lot of these. So I like that. I like that a lot. All right. So we got, got another super chat coming in from Adrian19. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you supporting the channel. I turned in my paperwork to MEPS before actually going to complete the medical test and whatnot. How long is, uh, is, is the wait for the results? I'm anxious. All right. So I think what you're trying to say here is that you submitted your pre-screen. Uh, and it's I'm not sure if you had some medical history or anything like that that went along with it. But if it's a simple pre-screen, then you should get it back within a few days. If it's a complex pre-screen because you have stuff in your medical history, then that could take up to 21 days or more, depending how busy your MEPS is and all that good stuff. But good luck to you. May the MEPS gods forever be in your favor and do great things. All right. So going back up to where I was. We got Idol says, yo, what's up? It's me again. What's your favorite MRE? Uh, I don't really have a favorite, but if I had to choose something off the top of my head, because it's been a really long time since I had some. <sighs> Honestly, I don't even have a favorite one, but I guess any MRE that has ch uh, the cheese in it. I love the cheese. The pound cake. Whether it's the normal pound cake or the chocolate pound cake, love that. And probably something Italian, one of the Italian ones. But I'll get back to you. Adam Yeezy, something like that. What location? Oh, not for me. See, that's why we have these sidebar conversations. That's why I want to start with the queue. Remember, kind of like uh, what Luis Martinez did here. James Bryant, any updates on prior service for reclassing three to five week course? So. I believe it starts sometime in August. I don't have any more information than that. Nothing else has come down the pipeline for me to, to, to relate to you guys, but it's about a five, three to five week course. I believe it's closer to five weeks. And I know that they found enough Joe Sardins to run it. So I'm waiting to get more information on it at that, uh, as we get closer to August, when that kicks off, um, I couldn't volunteer for it because of personal reasons, but I really wish I could have participated with that because they were looking for two national guard, Joe Sardin qualified, uh, Joe Sarns to go down there and run that for the five weeks, but yeah, I couldn't do it. Luis Martinez says, question National Guard to qualify for the VA loan. Do you do 90 days active duty requirement need to be consecutive or can it be a cumulative in time? So no, it could be cumulative 90 days, but it's usually easier if it's consecutive. But if I'm not mistaken, it's just 90 days in total. So if you ever get deployed or you're on 90 day, uh, title 10 orders or qualifying title 32 orders if you're in the national guard and it qualifies for it then yes 90 days of active duty federal service will qualify you for 50 percent of said post 9 11 benefit um, or the va uh the va home loan as you're talking about right here that's what you meant the va loan the same thing same qualifications but yeah adam easy also says i should ship off to leonardwood in april all right Nicholas Cogswell, question, is it strange that I am less nervous for basic training than I am uh, for jury duty? Also, I want to meet my biological father before I leave. Can you help me? I'm not sure what you mean by meeting your, like, I don't, I'm pretty confident that I don't know who your dad is, but uh, as far as jury, jury duty and basic training, that's not uncommon, but that's pretty funny though. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you mean, Nicholas. I'm, I'm not following at all. Uh, Addison Cotterman, I leave June 27th for active duty, 12 Mike, Ooh, 12 Mike firefighter. Any advice? Yes. I mean, advice to what? Like for basic training, keep your head down, do what you're told, be in the correct uniform, be on time, attention to detail. Uh, teamwork is a key. So work together, help each other out. Do not get into any verbal or physical confrontations. The fastest way to get out of basic training is to graduate. Do not get injured you know uh don't do anything that's going to prolong your process don't listen to the barracks lawyer say if you're because you know we're all going to have a moment where we 
question our why like why are we here like have like more than one why when you get there so when you're feeling down you're not feeling it you're uncomfortable whatever the case may be maybe you don't like being yelled at maybe you feel like you're tired of getting uh corrective training and all that good stuff remember your why push through the pain lean on your battle buddies and can continue to do great stuff all right you're gonna be fine all right we got nathan saying what's up what's up man appreciate you tuning in we got bubba joe saying oh yeah we talked about it. ricardo reyes i ship out in the 13th 25 uniform good luck to basic training to you anybody else going to basic congratulations and uh make us proud nathan says why is the army having such a hard time with numbers is it the whole toxic leadership thing that's going around i think it's not any one thing that's um making the military struggle for their numbers i think it's a combination of things that are popping up in the media like yes there are toxic things that happen in any organization that we're a part of yeah i'm not trying to make excuses for anybody i've experienced it myself and it, you really have to be resilient having a uh, positive self-talk having somebody to vent to having somebody to listen to you and give constructive feedback and just being there for your battle buddies and vice versa so is the army perfect no is the military perfect no again the like I, we get a lot of like old timers that are retired that are no longer here and they always say like oh the army's getting soft no the army's not getting soft the army is changing and and the only constant the only thing that's ever going to be consistent in life is change okay we get older we get wiser policies are changed this that whatever like based on my experience so far in the army it doesn't matter who the president is it doesn't matter who's in charge of you we control our minds and what we say to ourselves so as far as like hard time with numbers i think it's a combination of bad news in the media making us look bad um there are leadership out there that appear to not care about their soldiers they care more about their careers i mean i don't know like the biggest thing i think that 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 hinders um retention is leadership and i should probably ask to look at some of these uh exit surveys of what some of the complaints are from people that are leaving the military but i guarantee you that it's probably piss poor leadership and people like to throw toxic leadership around that that term or phrase toxic leadership sometimes it's not toxic leadership sometimes it's just leaders being hard and making hard decisions because you can't please everyone i think it, not that he's a perfect example but Bill Cosby, I think it was Bill Cosby. Yeah, I think it was Bill Cosby. He was like, at one point he said something along the lines like, I don't know the recipe to success, but the recipe to failure is to please everyone. So I'm not really sure where I was going with this, but leadership is what makes or breaks one's experience in the military. It's either going to make somebody love their experience in the military or wish they that they never joined. So if you're contemplating and joining and you're unsure because of whatever negativity may or may not be in the news, we as the soldiers, when we get that sphere of influence, so as you move up in rank and you become a sergeant and higher, as your influence grows, it is up to us to be the difference that this organization or any organization that we're a part of, right? We have to do our part to take care of our soldiers. And I think the biggest thing that leaders lack in today's military is empathy. That is not something in my opinion that could be taught. It's either you have it or you don't, but that is just my personal opinion. Don't take my word for it, but if you do your job and you do it well, you work well with others and you do the best you can to work well with others. But sometimes it really doesn't matter how good you are. There's always bad apples out there, but how you deal with those bad apples will dictate the outcome. As long as you follow the regulations, you maintain your military bearing, you should 
have a successful career. You're not going to like everybody, whether they're above you or below you or beside you. But your ability to navigate and to interact with those who are around you will dictate your, I'm not going to say stress levels, but because it can be stressful sometimes because sometimes you just want to say what's on your mind. Trust me, I've had like text messages this long, all right, like this long of my response to the craziness that I'm reading. Oh my gosh. And I end up deleting it anyway because like I, I vent I vent through the text, but I just don't send it because if I send it, <laughs> I'm going to get written up. But as far as retention is concerned, I think that that's it. It's the leadership. As far as the, the new recruiting numbers, it may be because of the, the, I forgot her first name, but the, 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 the Spanish girl, um, Michelle Guillen, I think was her name from Fort Hood, Texas. Like a lot of things are going on in Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, hopefully, God forbid you get stationed at Fort Hood, but do your best not to get stationed at Fort Hood. Just stay clear of Fort Hood. That is a hot, hot mess. But like that was an issue because that, that, I mean, they they made a whole documentary on Netflix about it. I still need to finish it. Sad, sad story. And uh, just know that it's not a common theme in the military, but it, things like that obviously do happen. And it's very, very unfortunate. And uh, it sounds like she did everything that she could within her power to get help. And it's situations like that where I feel like it's not, yes, the leadership should be dealt with, but it's not just the leadership. Others around you will see things and not say something or intervene. And that's what annoys the hell out of me when it comes to situations like that. But um, one day... I will go into detail with this type of a question, but because I am still currently serving, I have a kind of like a limiter, right? I have a certain limit to my freedom of speech while I'm in the service. So I'll just leave it at that, but I will finish it up with the army has been the next best thing since sliced bread for me. And based on my 23 plus years of service in the Army National Guard with 19, almost 19 being like over 19 active duty, but as far as like federal active duty in the Guard, AGR, Active Guard Reserve, I have almost 19 years of active duty and I have not seen any racist events. I've not seen any sexual harassment, sexual assaults, anything that people see on TV or in the news. I've never personally seen it. Do I hear things? Yes. Do I see things on the news? Yes. But I make sure that I talk to my soldiers that if ABC happens, you need to do X, Y, Z. And I am the first phone call you call if things are going sideways and you can't handle it at your level. But the army has so many opportunities and things that can and will help people if you put forth the effort to make this a like the best experience possible with that being said i got some a couple of uh super chats that i need to attend to at the bottom i will come back to luis martinez at 1917 all right so we got uh pika with the super chat thank you so much i don't even know if you're i'll just say pika thank you so much pika for supporting the channel appreciate you uh are we allowed to bring a journal to basic training yes you can bring a journal We'll be going here in a few days. Was thinking of taking one to write down my successes to give me some extra motivation every so often. I like that idea. And uh, if you want to know what else you can bring with you, I have a uh, what to pack basic training video going into the chat box now. It's also conveniently located down in the chat uh, in the description area. But yes, I, th I think that's pretty cool. I wish I had done something like that when I went to basic training. Will Wet also sent me a super chat. Appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. Says, my message is too long to send. It's broken up into bits in the comments. My question is, what are your thoughts on the situation? Please read through and reply. Thanks for all that you do. Let me see what I can do. Let me see. Who's that again? Uh, Will Wit. All right. As I'm scrolling up here, as I'm scrolling up looking for his questions or statements, do me a favor, like this video. It's somewhere down toward the bottom. Thank you very much.
All right, so I see you have a very serious question. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. So you start here. It says, uh, one, ER visit in 2020 for laceration under my left eye. I don't know what LLC means. ER visit again in 2020. For Proct, I'm not sure what Proct is, but my primary care provider was a MEPS doctor for 15 years. Okay. So I'm thinking I can get this cleared up a bit. Also have a class B felony on my record where, where I was 12. They didn't pull local agency checks, but I do have a domestic violence as well. Man, that's a hot mess. My dad was beating on my sister and I tried to leave while my mom, I think meant, while my mom was at the front door and I knocked her down. I pled guilty to DV. I was misdiagnosed with ADHD when I was 12 and was prescribed meds. Didn't take my parents, sold them. I'm just wondering how bad this may be to a recruiter. Uh, I had a center of bits. We're making my center of phone, but yeah, man. Uh, you, unfortunately, your situation is a hot mess. Um, first of all, DV in of itself is extremely difficult to get approved. In more cases than not, it is a permanent disqualifying uh, issue. Secondly, you said that you have a felony, which 99.9% .9 of them automatically dis, uh, automatically disqualifies you from service. So you didn't specify, you just said B felony. I don't care what A, B, C, D type of felony, but um, I'm not sure, but this sounds like this would be something that we would need to talk in a in a direct message. I, I know you just said uh, go up more, so I will. Okay, I see another comment. Uh, continue your care document. I'm not sure what that is. Allergy to narco. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, active problems. Hey man, um, this is a whole lot. <laughs> she corrected me. PCCs, PCIs. Yeah, yeah, I'm having a brain fart because I'm tired as hell. Uh, then he says here, this is what was pulled by my recruiter and disclosed information from continuity of care. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what, you have a super complex question here and there's a whole lot going on and it's broken up, not really understanding it. But again, DV, so from my understanding and a lack of a better term, they said you could beat up, but you can't beat down. So you beat your mom, I guess, to get out of the door. I'm not saying that it's allowed, but it's easier to get that forgiven than if it was like a girlfriend or your, or your sibling, right? So it sounds like that that could be possibly waived, but combining that with a felony, an unknown felony, I don't know what that felony was for. So that in of itself right there is probably going to permanently disqualify you from joining because I don't know what the felony is for. And then the third thing was the medical stuff, the ADHD. So if you haven't gotten medication in over two years, I mean, that's a crazy story to say that your parents were selling them. And that's a, a really unfortunate, not uncommon thing, unfortunately. I hear that story a lot. But for the medical stuff, you can watch this video. It's coming in the chat box now. It's also uh, linked down in the description area. But definitely go check that out. All right. You can send me a, a direct message on Instagram. Put everything in chrono chronological order that you just sent me in this chat box. I mean, I hate to make you do it. But that is a lot. And there's a, so much I need to say about it. So do that, and I will make sure that tonight I respond back to you pertaining to those questions in more detail. But I need you to be more specific to what that felony was for, right? What are the original charges and what the final disposition was? And was there any type of community service? Was it dismissed with um, prejudice? Was there any community service uh, done? Did they tell you to stay out of trouble and they would ultimately dismiss it type of a deal? And, and that type of information, all right? and a little more details to your DV case so I can uh, make an honest assessment to, to your situation. Mad Energy, thank you so much for super chatting me. Appreciate it. And for supporting the channel, I am applying just for a job in a field of interest. Do you think a mass shooting survivor should join the Army if 
Uh, I sign up for one job. Will I be in? Huh? So Mad Energy, if you're still here, let me know. Were you a survivor of a active shooting scenario? That would give me probably a little bit more um, context to to your question. All right. But I'm going to read that again just a little bit slower so I can understand it. I'm applying just for a job in a field of interest. Do you think a mass shooting survivor should join the army? If I sign up for one job, will I be in only that job? So I'm going to answer your second question or your last question. <clears throat> As I wait for your response in the chat box, I'm looking at it on my phone over here. But no, so you have the ability to reclass definitely within the first 10 years of your army career. And I say this to my soldiers all the time. Do your best to reclass to at least one other MOS within the first 10 years of your army career. If you can change and get three MOSs under your belt within the first 10 years, even better. The reason being is some MOSs will begin to struggle or have zero upward movement after they get to specialist E4 or even E5 sergeant. So having different MOSs, uh, being qualified in other MOSs, let's say you didn't hit the cutoff for this year for promotions and let's say you're not even close, but you're qualified in another MOS or two or three, you can compete for that MOS in the next year, at least for the National Guard. Not 100% sure if that works the same on active duty. I'm pretty sure it still does because we have primary MOS, secondary, and tertiary MOSs that we're uh, qualified for. But you can compete in any one of those MOSs as long as you had the points, so on and so forth. All right. But uh, good, good question. But let me know if. Oh, he hasn't. Um... Come on, man. You gave me a super chat. I know you're here. Now I don't want to move on. Oh, Mad Energy just said, OK, thanks. That's it. All right. So I, I'll try to address that first question. Should a, uh, an active shooter, mass shooting survivor join the army? If they are as mentally stable as possible and they're not going through ptsd currently and they can get medically cleared then yes they can join if they're medically sound if they're still mentally struggling and they have ptsd and they're showing signs and symptoms of ptsd they're probably not going to get medically cleared and they're not going to be able to join at all but if they have overcome the adversity and dealing with the the trauma that comes with that because that's not something that it's probably easy to just let go. You know what I mean? It takes a very unique person to to either block, ignore, or actually deal with that particular type of drama. So that's a twofold, right? It's either they've overcome it and they're mentally sound and get mentally cleared or not. So that is my response to that question. But appreciate the question. Very, very different than what I normally get. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, so let me scroll back up to where I left off. So Luis Martinez says, question. Is it true rotations are from 30 days to nine months or what's the average time one is activated national guard? So national guard on average is nine to 12 months. And, and, and that's for like overseas deployments. If it's something else, then it could be 30 days, could be 45. It really depends. But if you want to know like the different types of full-time opportunities, this is a full-time national guard video that I did. It's not working. Let me see my phone. Yeah, just uh, go in the search bar on YouTube. For some reason, it's not populating on, on my computer because I have it like as a quick text. But if you just type in there, full-time National Guard. Oh, maybe it's full-time National Guard Reserve. Here we go. Coming in the chat box. 
and it's more than likely also linked down in the description area but go check out that video for more of a uh, description of that but i gotta move on preston jacobs how achievable is 101 on the clerical score for the asvab i had a 4.1 gpa in high school and was always pretty strong in school i think it's pretty doable like if you had good grades in high school then pretty sure you should be able to get that but why 101 what opportunity are you looking at that requires a 101 in the cl line score i'm really curious <clears throat> Yaj KK says, I plan on calling up a recruiter soon, but what should I bring with me to the recruiting office just in case? So, did a video says, don't join the US Army until you watch this video. It's kind of clickbaitish, but I deliver. So, it's not really clickbait if you deliver. But to the first initial appointment, it does make it easier for both the recruiter and the applicant. I say it's easier because it eliminates an additional visit to the office to bring these documents back. So you're going to want at minimum to bring your birth certificate, naturalization certificate, and or your green card and all that apply, depending on your unique circumstance to include your original social security card, your high school diploma or official transcripts, your driver's license, state ID, your passport, whether it's a foreign passport and or your U.S. passport, you know, maybe you have dual citizenship from the other country or whatever. But uh, yeah, at minimum that if you're married, bring your marriage license, your dependent Social Security cards as well to include their birth certificates, green cards or naturalization certificates, all the all that apply to include it, your spouse's ID. All right. And uh, if at the end of that conversation, you decide to move forward with that branch of service, then you'll have those documents. Word to the wise, heed my warning. Don't leave your original documents with your recruiter. I don't give a flying F what excuse or reason your recruiter gives you. Do not leave your original documents. I don't care if they're a smooth talker. I don't care if they seem really, really nice. It is a tactic some recruiters use to keep your documents so that in the event that you decide not to join, it is a guaranteed one more face-to-face -face interaction with you to hopefully reel you back in and continue the process of joining. So just agree to have them make copies. They'll give you the application, which mirrors the SF-86, the security questionnaire that you will complete so that when you join, we'll know where you work for, for the past 10 years, where you live for the past 10 years, your family information, three character references, your schools, all that good stuff. We'll ask all kinds of like million and one different questions, but definitely go and check out that video. But those are the documents that you should bring with you uh, to the recruiting office. Appreciate you. Got another super chat coming in from Diamond Hawkins with the hashtag team swords. Appreciate you as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of my most loyal team Swords squad members right there. Full shizzle. Surprised she's not a channel member yet. I was at 1919. Man, I got to talk faster. We're already past the first hour, not even 20 minutes into this dream. All right. <clears throat> I might have to go longer tonight. Oh, you are a channel member. No, you're not a channel member. You know how I know? I'll tell you. Hang on. Let me scroll back down to the bottom to your super chat. So right here, if you are a channel member, uh... Let me see if I can share my screen real quick so you can see it. Oh, no, it won't let me show you. Um, but yeah, so on the right hand side of your name would be like this. I'll find somebody else who's a channel member on here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So those who are channel members, like when they click the, the join button on on a desktop version, like for Jaden Contreras, you get that circle with the two diagonal lines like that to the right of their name that tells me that you're a, a a channel member on my youtube channel um but you don't have to i'm just saying that um you should you should be only because you you know you support my channel so much but you don't have to i was just saying that you go above and beyond <laughs> that's all i'm saying uh but yeah let me go back up to 1919 where i left off preston jacobs whoops went too far if you are 
it, oh, that's not for me. That's for Bubba. Bubba, Bubba, Bubba. Bubba Joe. Jorge Acosta. I'm doing guard, and then when I get back from basic transfer, I transfer to Romeo. Con oh, ROTC. Gotcha. Just waiting on a waiver. Love your content. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for loving the content, and uh, glad I was able to help you out in some way. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And good luck in ROTC. Roly A, I got a general discharge for dirty urine back in 07 and after my basic IT while I was attending my first few drills at National Guard duty station, stayed out of trouble and nose clean. I was wondering uh, my, what are my chances in re-enlisting with the waiver for the age discharge and hand tattoo uh, before enlisting. So had a recruiter in Jersey tell me that three waivers are too much to join. Now they're just lying to you. You can have you can have every single waiver possible. You can have an administrative waiver for your, your, your type of discharge. If you require a medical waiver, then you can get that medical waiver. If you have a law violation, you can get that waiver. And then you need an age waiver, you can get that waiver. You can get you can collect them all like Pokemon. But the reason why your recruiter is telling you that and not being honest with you, or maybe they're just ignorant and they don't know the rules. But the reason why is if you had a positive drug test during your service meaning that you've completed your initial entry training or shipped out essentially and later on pissed hot on a drug test you are ineligible for life you are never allowed back into the military no ifs and or buts and no waivers authorized the only exception is if you failed a pre-accession meps medical processing drug test so if you got a positive drug and alcohol test at MEPS while processing to get into the military, you can fail it once and once only. And then currently after 90 days with an approved waiver, you could reapply. But it sounds like based on what you just shared that you shipped out to training, completed your initial training and moved on to your unit of assignment. And a few drills later, popped hot. If that is the case, I am sorry to uh, inform you that you are ineligible for enlistment. Excuse me. No waivers authorized for that reason. Not because of the amount of waivers you need, because you can collect them all. But, uh, man, that's unfortunate. Sorry to hear that, man. That, that sucks. And Conquistador says, I'm in New York, by the way. Would you be able to help me join the guard, or do I have to be given a random recruiter? Yes, I can help you. So read between the lines when I say this, but find me on Recruiting Ain't Easy on Instagram. Shoot me a message. I believe it's linked down in the description area. Go check it out. Send me a direct message. Again, that's Recruiting Ain't Easy. And we'll chat soon. Thank you. I can definitely help you. Ovo Jordy, what are some of the experiences you have heard from older enlistees, 28 years old asking, thank you. Uh, what do you mean? Like experiences where like in basic training or within their service in the unit, like post initial training, let me know. I'm not sure if you're still here. I doubt it. Cause we're only 22 minutes in, but I'll try to pay attention to the chat box. Appreciate you. Nathan says, how are army living conditions for me? I, I'm active duty, AGR, active guard reserve in the National Guard. So my living conditions are good. Now, when it comes to regular army active duty, it really depends on if you're living in barracks or if you live off post and you have housing because you have dependents, like, you know, you're married and, and you live off post or whatever. Then if you're living off post, you're probably going to have better conditions. But if you're a single soldier living in barracks, it really depends on the upkeep of the barracks. I do see from time to time that they have issues with black mold, which is not good, very bad for your health. And um, you're kind of treated like a college student. So worst case scenario, as a single soldier on active duty living in a barracks, you are going to share a room with a bath and a bathroom and maybe a small kitchenette. Best case scenario, you'll have your own room, but you share a, a joined bathroom and kitchenette so it'd be like two rooms kind of like a dorm room and then in the middle in between doors on either side so you, once you go to use the bathroom you lock the door so the other person in the room bedroom can't go in there and then you use the bathroom whatever right so 
the bathroom and the kitchenette is like common area and the doors go into your dorm room and that's like best case scenario anomaly all right I had to turn my head upside down anomaly says or asks i go to ag monday why do they check dental and do they do anything if you have bad teeth yes i describe it here in this reception video i created in my mini basic training mini series i also post a mini series if you want to check out the rest of the videos within that basic training mini series but yeah so yeah they take it so at meps it's just a visual at the reception battalion in a su quick summary they'll do a panoramic x-ray of your teeth to you know see what's going on in there they're all up in there like swimwear and if you do need some work they will make sure you get the work and it's free so um you're welcome but check out the video for more of an in-depth explanation jared hannah hello i'm a zero nine whiskey whiskey i think you mean do you mean zero nine mike i never heard of a zero nine whiskey maybe no I'm, is that warrant flight warrant uh about a week and a half i heard that there's a dental uh, so they need any wisdom teaching room. yeah they'll do the work at the, at the reception battalion i just described it so hopefully you saw that steven balboa what happens if i get my psych medical waiver denied twice i tried once and it was temporarily denied and they told me to come back in six months will i be permanently disqualified and don't pass again so steven i did a really really good in-depth medical best practices and tips and insights video I'm going to post it in the chat box right now. It's linked down in the description if you want to go check that out. July also says or asks, I have a BA, four-year degree, and an MBA, uh, MPA, master's. If I join the National Guard, would I go to the same basic training AIT as someone with a degree? Yes, it doesn't matter if you have a high school diploma, GED, or even a doctorate degree. Everyone will go through Army basic training at the same four locations. No one is better than anyone else. That is just means that you are super duper educated that's it we got natalie in the house natalie what's up what's up hello hello hola como estas hope all is well thank you for tuning in and always consistently supporting me on the channel luigi pasqua also says becoming an officer is my life's goal i really want to do active but i am open to reserve a guard i want to make a career out of the military i.e get out of where i am in early 60s oh while wow, you are in this okay I, I see what you're saying so with that said oh we got a new channel member i'll, I'll, I'll uh, highlight that in a second but luigi check out this video um active duty versus guard and reserve all right check out the active duty versus guard and reserve video that should help you decide some of the pros and cons, I show the double-edged sword. So what I feel like could be a pro, I also discuss the con, like the opposite of that for both active duty and, and guard and reserve. That should help you in the decision-making process. But if as long as you have a four-year degree, you're a US citizen, you have a GT 110 or better, and you don't have any uh, like negative financial history, and minor to no law violations if you want to go active duty go active duty there's nothing wrong with active duty and there's nothing wrong with guard or reserve it really depends on what it is that you want out of this journey in the military another video i want you to check out is guard versus reserve versus the reserve and uh ocs i'm not sure how old you are check out that ocs video and what else could help you oh and this uh don't join the u.s army until you watch this video will also help you go through your decision making process as well to help identify what's important to you and the biggest thing in that video that's going to uh, share with you is what is your why what are your deal breakers what are your goals and which option is going to be best fit your needs, wants, and desires. So that that video, that last one I just posted, don't join the U.S. Army until you watch this video, and the active duty versus the Guard and Reserve video, those two right there are probably going to significantly assist you in your efforts in deciding which one is best for you. All right. 
So we got two new channel members coming in tonight from C Cyber Profit. All right, appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining the Team Swart Squad, the official uh, channel member. Appreciate you. And we got Diamond Hawkins. She actually did it. Thank you. You didn't have to. Appreciate you. Welcome to the uh, officially to the Team Swart Squad member. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, you two. And uh, let me go back up to where I was. Christian Aries says, I got hit with a psych waiver, physic waiver. I think he meant psychic or psych waiver. And I am waiting. It's been over a, a month. Is it normal to wait this long for this kind of a waiver? I'm supposed to see a psychiatrist for a consultation. Yes. So I explain it in my med waiver video. So I don't know if you're here. I'm going to put it in the chat box because it's a very important uh, uh, waiver video. Definitely go check that out. But yeah, medical waivers can take anywhere. So to for a consultation, it could be like days. It could be like a month and a half to sometimes two months. It really depends on your maps and the civilian contracted individuals that are responsible for knocking those types of things out. But I do talk about that and the best practices of getting that type of a waiver approved if you have mental health issues. So definitely go check that out. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And definitely good luck on the the the, the waiver process. And that was you. All right. Appreciate you. Francis A with the hashtag team source. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you for all the honest information you put out there. I joined back in August. I'm currently in AIT at Fort Gordon as a 25 uniform. I will be graduating in 14 days. I don't know if you're still here, Francis, but congratulations. Keep up the hard work and grinding it out. Hopefully you graduate on time. And uh, I definitely appreciate the feedback. And um, I'm going to start that so I can take a photo of that because I plan on doing something special with that, these types of comments in, in a future video. Um, but thank you very much for continuing to watch my channel. So, yeah, so, but I have other plans too, but appreciate you. Giuseppe De Rosa says, hashtag Team Swartz. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you very much for tuning in as always. William Bristol says, is joining the military 26 too late to join for active duty? No, it is perfect timing. There is no bad time to join unless you're no longer eligible to join because of your age. That's the only time where it's bad, uh, not bad, but like late to join. So you're good, William. I don't know if you're still here, but joining at an older age, I have a video just for you coming into the chat box if you're still here. All right. And uh, got another, oops, got another super chat from Diamond Hawkins. My girl here, man. Solid. All right. Are astigmatism waivers based on your best corrected vision acuity or your error? Someone told me it's your error, but I thought it was based on your corrected vision with glasses. Yes, it, it in most cases, if it's correctable to 2020, you're fine. But the, the biggest contributing factor in whether or not your waiver will get approved is one of your eyes has to be no more than I think it's 2100 off the top of my head without looking it up. Um, but I will look into the Doty. So if you direct message me on Instagram, if I have, I'm off tomorrow. I took a leave day because I got to take care of some things, you know, but um, either tomorrow or Friday, I will look up the current Doty uh, and see what it says about astigmatism. But I believe if as long as one eye is at least 2100, you're good to go for en enlistment. But I, I will say this. I want to say like 98% of the astigmatism waivers are approved. So I don't think you have too much to worry about, in my personal opinion. Oh, then that's too easy. I don't even know why they even required a waiver. I just, it's not showing up on my computer, but I see it on my phone. <clears throat> I'll read it off the phone because it's not showing up on my computer yet. But you said my left eye is correctable. No, I don't think it's a, that's a really good question. Whether it's correctable or if it's the error, I don't recall. That's a really good question. I've never had anyone ask it in that specific manner. But I feel like you should be fine with those results. But I'll have to double check in the Doty. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. So direct message me on Instagram tonight and um, I'll see what I can do for you and in getting that information for you. But I, I personally feel that you'll be fine. Most people are. Um... Let me go back to up to where I was. 
Yeah, I'm gonna look into that air or uh corrected thing. Yeah. That is a really good question. I've never been asked that, and that's good to know. Twelve Delta swimming boys. All right. Conkey. Um, Khan Kieftador says, that's the distinction I wanted to know. I see conflicting answers everywhere. Look, uh, thank you for your clarification regarding my last question. Sorry for the poor phrasing. No, no, it's all right. As long as I understand, then, then we're Gucci. We're, we are Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Nicholas Cogswell, I'm going to come right back to you. All right. Um, 1932. We got, uh, super, not sure what that is, but... <laughs> Thank you for supporting the channel. I'm not sure if that's a super chat or whatever that is, but appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you very much. I said 1932, right? Yeah. Here we go. So Nicholas Cogswell says, you are talking about GPA and ADHD. I do not know my exact GPA, but it was a mid to upper twos disqualified <clears throat> will my waiver get shot down 11 v or 19 delta is the mos uh gpa definitely helps if it's higher but again it all boils down to as long as you were not in an iep class that you can obtain letters from like colleagues employers professors and teachers that you perform like an average student with no uh, assistance then you should be fine and again as long as you've been off medication for six months or more then the waiver should get approved all right so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but if you follow the tips in my video and also be get, getting like an updated behavioral health uh, evaluation as well, will definitely help go, go a long way in getting a, a favorable result for that waiver for sure. Riley Simmons says, does the army look at transcripts? I have a diploma. Um, no, we just care about, I mean, we will need official transcripts if you don't have the diploma, but if you have the diploma, then we don't need the transcripts unless you're going to be a commissioned officer. Then we'll need your official, uh, no, for college, we'll need your official transcripts, not for high school. Goji Petrosan, thank you for your answer. You're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in and asking your question. Mad Energy says, should I give them my college transcript if my GPA is low? Yeah, your GPA is irrelevant. As long as you have the credits earned, that's it. The Air Force and the Navy, they care about GPA, but for the Army, credits earned are credits earned. It, like I said, and, and this is my biggest pet peeve with like students going to college because I'm not like, I'm not saying I'm anti-college, but I'm not pro-college either. I think it's nice to have, and if it's required for the goals that you have in life that mandate that requirement, then yeah, you need it. But um, for a... I won't go down that rabbit hole right now, but with that being said, GPA means nothing in the army. If you had the credits, you are good to go. All right. That's all you need to know. And bottom line. I got to move on. Got lots of questions to get to Ricky D. What's up? What's up? Just wanted to say thank you for all that, uh, for all your great content. I completed basic training at Fort Sill in January, and now I'm halfway through 68 whiskey AIT at Fort Sam Houston. Thank you again. I appreciate you and thank you for your support. And, um, yeah, man. Keep up the hard work and good luck in the next uh, chapter of your army career. Uh, I'm not skipping anything, Riley. Trust me, I'm not. Maybe it's being blocked or something, but I don't skip anyone's question. I'm going to come right back to you, Christopher Dunlap. So hang in there tight. All right. So that's 1936. We got a new member. Thank you so much to Luigi. Oh, yeah. I think we hang on. I think did we talk about this? No, we didn't. So you are a new channel member to Team Swartz. Appreciate you, Luigi. I I thank you very much. Thank you for joining Team Swartz. Uh, I forgot where I was. As I'm scrolling back up to where I last left off, do me a favor. If you have not already done so, please like the video. It does help out. Uh, the algorithm and pushing out my videos to others. Oh, somebody has a really good question about the new army logo. I'm going to get to that. I can't wait to get to that.
All right, I'm right about where I left off. So Christopher Dunlop, what I failed my first A what if I failed my first AIT and got reclassed? What happens if I fail this other MOS? Will I get chaptered out or get reclassed to a third time? So in most cases, you're just gonna be let go. You're gonna be chaptered out of the army and that's it. But if you if you are so like in most cases you will be chaptered out. In some my, like very few far in between chances, if you have like the most immaculate work ethic, like impeccable work ethic, and you are clearly demonstrating and it's like your drill sergeants can see that you are giving 1000% effort to be successful, then in rare occasions like that, they they have been known in the past to give you a third opportunity but if you're struck i mean so it's it sounds like you did fail your first ait so if you're in your second ait it, it, it doesn't matter anyone who's going to ait depending on your ait and your ability to to learn and study if you if it's a challenge for you then you need to work on your um, your study habits. So when you're in AIT, stay off your daggone phone, all right? Monday through Thursday, stay off your phone. When you come home from school, review your notes. If you have the regulations ready available, then reread everything that you cover for that day. So keep notes of the regulations and chapters that you cover for the day. Write down really, really good notes. And when you're in class, pay attention, write down notes, ask questions, participate in class, because the more interaction and engagement you have during class, the, it's going to help with the retention of the information that you're learning on a daily basis. Backing that up with studying in the evening will also help you help you to include the weekends, right? And furthermore, getting a good night, good night, re, good night's rest is imperative for having uh, the focus every day in class. So making sure that you stay off your phone. When lights are out, that's it. Go to sleep. Lights out, that's it. Wake up for PT, go to class, do your thing, right? You're there to get MOS qualified. Your friends and your family on your phone can wait for you. You'll do whatever you can and you'll pass. You also said, I failed my first AIT and got reclassed. What will happen? And there we go. If I fail AIT again, yeah. Again, in most cases, you'll be chaptered out. In rare occasions, you could be, you know, you could stay in, but do your best. I did a video on study study habits or study tips. I want you to watch that video. Even though it's geared towards the ASVAB, it's the same concept, but use this for AIT, all right? I don't want to see you get chaptered out of the army because of whatever. So just do your best and forget the rest. Stay focused, all right? Fox shut. What do you, uh, what do you, th I think you mean, what do you think of the new logo and the be all you can be thing? So I love it. All right. I, it's nostalgic for me. When I first joined the, the army national guard, the army slogan back then was be all that you can be in the army. And I loved it. Unfortunately, the guards logo or slogan at the time was in the guard. You can, I'd never liked that. You can, but anyway, as far as the new logo of the star, it's gonna have to grow on me. I it I don't have a wow factor with it. I like the minimalist style for sure. But as far as bringing back the new slogan, I love it. I absolutely love it. We're going back to the basics, back when the army was perceived as being strong, tough. And um, I think that this messaging is way better than the previous messages with the so-called what they were claiming to be woke and whatever. From a content creator's perspective, I thought that that, that those types of videos were, were cool as far as like from the creative aspect. I just feel like they were um, definitely targeting, uh, it was just a bad message. I think it was a, a good idea, but horrible delivery and focusing on the wrong things but i'm glad that they fixed it is it too late to have 
done this to fix the 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 marketing i don't know but i really dig it i like it and um i hope that it helps improve upon the vision of the army and i think that it's a really good step in the right direction if that makes sense <clears throat> maureen hess hashtag team sports appreciate you how soon does a soldier or can a soldier rank up after basic training what advice do you have to stand out and have the opportunity to rank up and this boils down to time and grade and time and service so the more the uh so like for e1 through e3 so e1 to e2 you have to have at least six months uh, of time and grade before you could automatically be advanced to the next rank your unit still has to do a da form 4836 i believe it is and um no 4856 yeah, 4856, right? And then, uh, no, 48. And I think uh, I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> my brain is fried. Anyway, six months for that. E3 to to um, E4 is, uh, I believe it's like 18 months. I have to remember off the, top of my, uh, off the top of my head. But if you are high speed and you do what you're supposed to do, in most cases, majority of people can get a, uh, a a waiver done by your company commander and advance you to the next rank and no issues, no qualms. So if you're high speed, you put it forth a lot of effort and uh, you're perceived to be reliable, dependable and all the good stuff, you could easily get waivers up to the rank of, uh, of specialist E4. When you get to the specialist of E4, then I think you need at least 36 months of uh, time in uh, service before you can start competing for Sergeant E5. So just keep that in mind, all right? It's been a while since I've looked up that regulation, but yeah, that's that's the basics. Time and grade, time and service. Yumi, uh, I would not be able to qualify. I have to I have too many things against me, but wishing everyone who does serve or are planning to serve the very best in your journey. I agree, thank you very much. John Smith, can you do green to gold program in the guard? Yes, but as I always tell people, you have to be the best of the best, right? You have to have like usually on average, like three years of stellar. I mean, like superb, superior, promote above peers type of non-commissioned officer evaluation reports to even be considered for the green to gold, right? It's very, very competitive. Ah, okay. Yeah, I like those too. Young Savage says, how much freedom do I get in AIT 88, Mike? Uh, from my understanding, you, you again, this is going to be site specific to what their SOP, standard operating procedures are, meaning like what is acceptable, right? So in most cases, you'll have your cell phones every night and weekends. Eventually, as you earn more privileges, you'll get on post passes. And if you're lucky, you'll get off post passes to like, Go to the local mall or the movie theater when you have some free time but you will have some freedom in ait unless you guys jack it up you know what i mean but you'll be all right youngster or a young tater rather what advice would you give to a young 17 year old wanting to go infantry but your parents don't want you uh to do it it's my dream by the way so this is kind of tough because like i don't want you to like peeve your your parents and i get that that is your dream and that's what you want right you don't need your parents permission to join the military you just need your parents permission to do the medical exam so you can sign up for whatever it is that you want to do but i want you to think of this okay first of all Infantry is only in the guard and active duty. There's literally just one infantry unit in the reserve, and I believe they're now located in the state of Washington. With that said, um, with that said, my recommendation to you is this, right? You live under the roof of your parents. You're more than likely not in a position to fly out the nest and leave your parents house and live your life right so compromise and this would be my advice if you were my applicant choose another mos that is not combat arms related or 
find an MOS in the infantry unit if it's guard because you can directly join an infantry unit like I did, right? So I failed the color vision test, so I couldn't be a 13 Foxtrot in a field artillery company. So I ended up going 42 Alpha, which is what it is now, but back then it was 71 Lima. So, I mean, I had no other choice back then, but this is what I'm recommending to you. I was a human resources specialist in a field artillery company. So I still got to train and do all that hua hua stuff, but as a human resource specialist. So compromise with your parents. If you're going guard, choose an MOS that is not combat related in a combat unit. That'll be like the workaround. If you're going active duty, then again, choose combat support, right? And then um, reclass to infantry because they're never going to say no if you want to reclass to infantry. You can go infantry anytime. So once you get past your first three year contract, or your contract, whatever it is that you sign up for. I wouldn't do anything more than four years, but do three three years, right? And then go infantry later on. Cause then you're like 21, 22, 23, whatever that time frame is. And you're a little bit older, you're more mature, you can um make those types of decisions and have experienced certain things in life to see if that's truly what it is that you want to do, right? As a 17 year old, I also feel like it would be more beneficial for you to get a combat support MOS so that you can get some real world skills, especially if you're going active duty that, that, that would help you in the civilian sector. And again, maybe later on do infantry. So you're compromising with your parents, but work, work with that. Okay. Or you could just say F it and do whatever it is that you want, but it doesn't sound like that's the case because that's why you're asking me for advice. So I say compromise. Everyone's happy. You're still joining. You're still going to go to basic training, do a combat support MOS, maybe in a combat unit and uh, have fun for a few years and then, and that, and then, and then go infantry. That would be my recommendation for you. Get your DD two of our team beef turkey. Uh, that's funny. And uh, let's see, what was it? Eli Yabari, you said I missed you. So let me scroll up and see if I see your comment because I didn't see anything. I'm going line by line. So just so you know, I because I, I know you're still here because you had just commented it. So Eli, all right, sometimes if you use a keyword or a phrase that I had blocked for whatever reason, I mean, I'm already back to like 732 and I'm not seeing your question or comment. So it, it it's not that I'm skipping you. It's just, it's not showing up on my side for whatever reason. So uh, rephrase your question or direct message me on Instagram at team Swartz. Cause again, I'm not, um, I'm not ignoring you. Okay. It's just, uh, Oh, here, here's one from you. I don't know if this is what you mean. All right. But I'm going in order. So Eli Yabari, uh, Yabara says, should I get a nice car or truck when I'm in the military? I say, be frugal with your money. Do not go out and buy a expensive vehicle, right? Because when you're active duty, especially if you're an E1 private, you are not going to have a lot of money, all right? So it's going to be around, I, 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 I'll put it right here, uh, National Guard, pay later? no, National Guard pay. So this is the uh, U.S. Army Reserve and Guard Pay Calculator video. Not, not the calculator, but it's a video that talks about pay. Now, obviously, we got a huge uh, raise this January. So if you go to that link that's in the description area that I show you in the video, plug in your rank, and that'll show you what you're going to make on active duty. All right? And... You got to understand that you have to budget your money because you can be very, very tight. Now, obviously, starting out, it's not a lot of money and it is little, but in the same token, you're not paying rent. You're kind, you're, you're getting money for food, but they take it back because they're going to feed you. So you're not paying money for food. They're like, again, they're giving you money to pay for food. So it's kind of like when I lived in housing on post they gave me housing allowance but they also took the housing allowance to pay for the housing that i was living in if that makes sense so just go check out that video that'll explain more and uh, hopefully that makes sense for you and hopefully that was the question in which you were trying to ask 
So I appreciate you. And I got to go down. So hang on. 1943. Navy has it really bad too. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to come back to you, Nicholas Cogswell. That was at 1943. All right. So let me scroll back up now. I'm at the bottom because we got a couple of super chats. One big one from... Uh, one of my favorite people called Diamond Hawkins. There we go. Diamond Hawkins. I graduate with my bachelor's this year in December. I was initially thinking about enlisting and going officer, but I think warrant officer is a better route for me. What are your thoughts on warrants? So, uh, real quick, because I know you're watching, let me know if you're going guard, reserve, or active duty so that I can better address this question. But just, while I'm waiting for that response, I will say how warrant officers work. Unless you're joining straight into the army, for, it's called street to seat, meaning like you're active. Okay, perfect. So uh, are you trying to become a flight warrant officer or just like a warrant officer in general? Let me know that too real quick. Because that's the pretty much the only option as someone like you who is a non-prior service member, meaning you've never served in the military. And if you want to go warrant officer, that is the only way, right? I, I didn't skip you, Brandon. I, I got you. Uh, I see your super chat and everything. I got you, Brandon. I got you, all right? Uno momento, por favor. You're like right below her for right here. So you're right here. I got you. So let me help her out real quick and I'll get you. Um, but... So active, you didn't let me know. So just one officer in general, I think I like that. Okay, cool. So to, so warrant officer from the jump, when you're first joining, is not an option unless you're going to try to be a flight warrant officer. So that's not an option for you. So warrant officers is for those who have been in the army for a specific amount of time and in an MOS that that basically like for example let's say you join the army to be a 91 Bravo a light wheeled vehicle mechanic that is a filler or i think what they call it is a filler MOS basically anything in the maintenance field so after so like warrant officer is not like OCS warrant officers are subject matter experts in a particular field within the army Whereas OCS, there's a basic requirement, right? GT line score of 110 or better, which is the same requirement for warrant. Must be a U.S. citizen, same as warrant. And uh, you need a four-year degree. Whereas in warrant officer, you don't necessarily need a degree. Some of them you do. Some of them are very specific to what degree it needs to be in. Or you just might need a a, uh, a class or a few classes, very specific classes, uh, for to be warrant. So warrant officers require you to be a non-commissioned officer for one to five years, depending on the MOS in which you're qualified in that you want to become a warrant officer in. And in this example, you're a 91 Bravo light wheel vehicle mechanic. And if you go and drop your warrant officer packet and you're otherwise eligible for it and you get approved, you'll go to warrant officer school and then you'll go to every single MOS that pertains to the maintenance field. So you'll be you'll go to school for heavy wheeled vehicle mechanics, track vehicle mechanics, um, HVAC, meaning he heating and air conditioning repair, generator repair, um, uh, chemical and quartermaster repair, weapons repair, everything and anything within the maintenance field. And basically from that point forward, you will be the SME, the subject matter expert that will advise the company commander in making decisions based on the uh, questions that they have pertaining to your expertise. So that is pretty much how the warrant officer work. And OCS, whether you should do it now or later, because you're going active duty, all right, I don't know if you want to wait. So the two options that you have is wait until you graduate and then join straight from there into active duty, which is probably going to be the more preferred method, in my opinion, if you can wait it out or... You could join and then drop your packet later on once you've achieved your four-year degree and otherwise eligible for it. The only difference is the recruiting command assumes the risk at time of contracting versus you getting recommended typically from your company commander. Any officer can recommend you and give you a recommendation letter, but it's usually going to be your company commander. And if your company commander, A, doesn't like you, doesn't know you, or maybe doesn't feel that you would be a good fit, 
or you know has a negative opinion of your potential leadership abilities and if that's the case then it doesn't matter that you have a four degree and that you want to go cs so that's why i'm saying it's a little bit easier when the recruiting command assumes that risk in advance uh, 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 of allowing you go ocs if that makes sense so hopefully that makes sense and addresses your question so we got brandon rivera here thank you so much for the super chat you are the man i miss you i hope all is well i'm not sure if you're still in the guard are you still infantry in the guard let me know appreciate you and thank you for tuning in now i'm going to scroll up to see if you had something right before that i could have sworn i saw yeah here we go brandon rivera says hey sergeant swartz remember me i'm trying to go in ocs with one of the other recruiters at Farmingdale any advice since I served already and now I have a degree what can I do to get to the branch I want Ooh, ooh, you dirty mother flower how dare you contact another recruiter oh ooh, mm. Whew. I sense a half right face coming to you right now um so Not going to lie, I'm a little salty. I'm a little salty, but trying to go with yes. Uh, I'm not understanding like what kind of advice. It's either you qualify or you don't. So the basic qualifications are obviously you have a four year degree, right? Good. Uh, GT line score of uh, 110 or better. I know you're a good kid. I from my understanding, from what I recall, when I enlisted you the first time, you didn't have any law violations. I'm pretty confident that you're very responsible with your finances. You don't have any finance, uh, finance issues. But uh, if at time of enlistment, if you can go federal OCS, that would be my recommendation to you. Go federal OCS. All right. Um, that would be the best bet because they have the higher success rate of passing. If you go traditional state OCS, which is part time, that's like a 15, 16 month program that starts in like, like you better join right now because it starts like in the next month or two. And, um, during that, as long as you're good at land navigation, which you should, because you are infantry then, and I know you were really, really fit, right? So PT is going to be good. And your land navigation should be good because you are infantry. While you're doing the state traditional OCS, they're more than likely going to offer you the accelerated OCS option, which is nine weeks, right? Versus the 12 weeks of the federal OCS. So you get it faster. And uh, I think that's what I recommend. And that's my advice to you. And uh, and yeah, so when it comes to branching, uh, you can watch my video here that goes into more detail of all the three different options for OCS. But you have a wish list. So you'll list like most interested, the least interested for at least 10 branches that you would like to go into. If you if you graduate on the commandant's list and the top 10% of your class, in most cases, you get what you want. However, comma is based on the needs of the army. So I'm not sure if you're going active duty guard or reserve, but that is how it works out. It sounds like you're going guard because you're talking to somebody in Farmingdale. No comment. And then he also says federal and I still go up to Sergeant First Class just on. I'm not a big shot, man. I'm just your average guy. But I, I'm 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 not gonna lie, I'm a little hurt. I'm a little salty that you didn't reach out to me. Your dad talks to me more than you. <laughs> uh let's see, Brandon uh I said federal and I could still go to Sergeant First Class. What do you mean? I'm not following. What do you mean? Who who's a sergeant first class? You're you're working with somebody that's a sergeant first class over there. I'm trying to think who's sergeant first class over there. I'm not sure who's over there. Anyway, um, <laughs> for sure, Mike. Hell yeah, of course I'm salty. How dare you? All right, so let me go back up to where I was, but that's my uh, that's my advice to you, Brandon. Appreciate you though, and good luck to you. If you want to go through me, it's not too late. Hashtag, I'm just saying. I'll put you in like a champ. It would be my pleasure. 
Oh, I went too far. Where was I? Okay, here we go. Um, all right, awesome. I'm looking forward to it, Brandon. We'll talk offline for sure. <clears throat> so we were here, now we're here. So young Tater, what advice would you give uh, to a young... Se oh, yeah, I think... Yeah, we already talked about that. I talked about that, and I talked about that, and I talked about that. Uh, yeah, Cogswell. All right, so uh, I DM you. Awesome. Thank you, Diamond. Appreciate you. About the father thing, I never met my father since I was six months old. What what I am asking is, could the army potentially get some helpful information? Uh, no, unfortunately, you probably have to get like a private investigator to try to locate your father. I think that's what you mean with that question is, can we assist you in finding and locating your father? And we don't have any uh, assets that could help you with that, honestly. So I apologize. That sucks, but... Hopefully you uh, can figure that out on your own, and yeah, that's unfortunate. But I, I do hopefully I do hope that you guys are able to connect and talk, and maybe develop some sort of uh, relationship now that you're older. Victoria says I am going to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, for boot camp and for AIT 13 Foxtrot. Do I go straight from boot camp to AIT, or is there a week off in between? So it may take like a week or two before you get to your AIT site, depending on how they set up the travel. But with that being said, there's no time off. Like you're not going to be able to like go home or whatever. Like you're going to be uh, gainfully employed, as they say, during that holdover period or hold under, depending on when you ship. But with that being said. Yeah, there's no time off. You're going to go straight to AIT and that's it. All right. Amelia failed my ASVAB. Any website to study or practice? Yes, Amelia. If you're still here, the two YouTube ASVAB channels is Grammar Hero and Gaminol Tutors. These are the two that I highly recommend the best on YouTube. And then there's like books and stuff that I put in this video here under the ASVAB. What is it based on? Video has additional free resources, but definitely go check out those three things and uh, good luck to you. EC says, do you foresee ADHD waivers being easier to get in the future or is the army will be more? Is right now it's as lenient as it's going to get. And right now, currently it had been extended to sometime in June. So like start the process now so that you can get in there like swimwear and not have to worry about it mad energy says uh applying just to get a job in a specific field do you think that mass shootings are uh, we talk about that vegan hitman interesting name <laughs> hello i did my medical at meps today for the new york national guard wish me luck guys hell yes yeah, i'm talking about and thank you for uh tuning in nathan I appreciate the reply. I just hear toxic leadership all the time, and it's a concern for a lot of incoming recruits. Yes, I can definitely uh, see why that could be a concern. And all I can say is if you do your job and you do it well, then in, in most cases, you won't have anything to worry about. But yeah, I mean, I already talked about it, but um, hope for the best and plan for the worst, if that makes sense. Riley Simmons says, can I go into a recruiting office and see if I'm qualified to join, but wait to sign any paperwork until I'm ready? Yes, it is possible. You can go for informational purposes only. Absolutely. You, oh, that's not for me. So Eli Yabara says, what is the cool MOS to be in that's not too hard, but not too easy? Uh, it really doesn't matter about what I feel right now, because it, it really depends on what, like, I don't want to sit here and tell you like, oh man, the best best MOS to get into is ABC MOS because of this, this, this. And let's say you go take the test and you don't even qualify for that MOS. And now what? Like my opinion does not matter. Like I don't know you. I don't want I don't know what makes you tick, what your interests are, what makes you motivated and inspired, and what you think that you'll enjoy. So the 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 video I want you to watch is this here. Okay. Dobbs video. Uh, which ones do you qualify for once you pass this? Once you pass your ASVAB, check out this video and listen to the advice and tips that I talk about in that video. Okay. And uh, good question. Mikey B says, what's up, y'all? I want back in. The Navy enlists people up to 41 and the Army is 35. Yes, but we can do waivers up until your 44th birthday, according to the waiver department. I haven't seen anything really over 41, 42. But uh, that's what they say. 
Santos Sarante says, I'm going to MEPS on Friday. Will an appendix surgery disqualify me from enlisting? No. And you might have to get like the paperwork and stuff, but no, it should not prevent you from joining at all. As long as it's been more than six months, you're good to go. Got another super chat coming in from EC. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for supporting the channel. He asks, or I don't know if it's a he, but they ask, what do you mean ADHD waivers are being lenient until June? Did something change recently? I was on medication about 17 months ago, have uh, been cleared. So you haven't watched my most recent video, and I've been saying it so many times throughout this stream tonight. ADHD seems to be like a hot topic uh, tonight in tonight's live stream. But go check out my U.S. Army's medical waiver guide and best tips and what the U.S. Army medical waiver process is like. Go watch that video. I personally or not personally, but can't think of the word. I'm, I'm having a brain fart here, but I oh, I specifically address ADHD in the video. But yes, what I'm saying is last year they they're doing a pilot program that deals with add adhd and anxiety and loosening up some of the current guidance at that time to allow more people to join with those conditions and they are they are monitoring those who join with those conditions to see if they get through the initial training and all that good stuff so hopefully if you do get approved please don't mess it up for the rest of us because we do want this to continue for others and so on and so forth but with that being said uh it, it was supposed to expire back in december or january but they extended it sometime to june of this summer so as long as you're not on medication for more than uh, for for six months, then you're in a good position to pre-qualify for. But watch that video for the, some of the things that I strongly encourage you to do to increase the favorable outcome of your waiver request. All right. Sam, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. You said, can I do a police academy while I'm in the guard? Yes. And what I would highly recommend is when you do go to the police academy, talk to your unit about being temporarily transferred to the ING, Inactive National Guard, ING, Inactive National Guard. What that basically does is it hits the pause button on the VCR or the TV, kind of, sort of speak, right? metaphorically speaking but basically it puts a pause on your contract so let's say your academy takes six months you get transferred to the ing so you can primarily focus on your academy and not worry about anything else and what happens is let's say it's six months and let's say you are doing a six-year contract if you're in the ing for six months instead of doing six years you're going to do six years and six months because you have to make up those six months that you were basically uh in limbo so that you can complete the, the police academy, if that makes sense. So that's a good question. And yes, it is doable in that manner, as which I just described to you. Appreciate you. Shoot, forgot where I was. As I'm scrolling up, if you have not already liked the video, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Man, we got a lot of good stuff in here tonight. Okay, it was here. Then I said here. Oh, so Jonathan R. Is it hard to go into the AGR positions? Yes and no. So I did a video on it that goes into more detail. Oh, shoot. Where did I go? So let me type it in here. So this is the full-time National Guard Reserve Opportunities video, and I go into it. So 
Uh, for let, let's say the New York Army National Guard, they list all their jobs on that website. And um, as long as you meet the prerequisites that's listed on that website for the jobs, then you can apply for it. So they'll tell you like what rank is available. Like for example, let's say you want to become a recruiter, which is AGR, right? So currently right now, you need to be a specialist or a corporal promotable with having BLC qualified, meaning that you finished your first initial leadership school called basic leadership course. And as long as you, you know, don't have any law violations, finance issues, you qualify for a secret clearance. If you don't already have one, that way you can join and ha join to be a recruiter and have one because you can't be a recruiter and not have a security clearance. So, if you can get through the interview process and, and sometimes it's not even MOS specific, it could just be a duty duty position, right? So if hired, then you're good. So I, in my opinion, it's not that it's um, hard to get into. It's how well you interview and sell yourself. That's the biggest thing. And doing your research on the particular position that you're going into to be able to effectively respond to the questions that you may or may not get during the interviewing process or the board process. So good luck to you and I uh, will see what we can do. So you got Diamond Hawkins with another super chat this evening saying we need updated 42 alpha video details on AIT. I got you. I'll uh, find some uh, people that came back from 42 alpha school and, and we'll talk about it and I'll, I'll get that up as soon as I possibly can. All right. Appreciate you. And thank you for the for the suggestion. You definitely didn't have to give me a super chat for that, but <laughs> appreciate you as always, Diamond. Appreciate you so much. Um, Tyler W. also gave me a super chat. Appreciate you. He says, um, love the info. Very informative. Had a question too long to post. It's a bit up in the chat. Uh, I'll be sure to look at your recent videos for more information as well. Oh, man. Let me see if I can find it, Tyler. Uh, hopefully it's not too far back, but I'll do my best to get to it right now. I'm scrolling up, but in the meantime, while I'm doing that. Thank you very much, Tyler, uh, for helping me out with the channel, with the super chat. It's definitely not going to waste. So far, I'm not seeing. I'm. Oh, here we go. So we got three back-to-back -back comments, but it sounds looks like there might be another one above that. Maybe not. All right, let, me, let me go back down. Looks like you had three comments. It says, so if I was misdiagnosed at 16 years old with ADHD and other mental issues and took medication for less than a year and had a new psych eval to prove that I am 29 now and applying to the army, how accurate is the new Genesis system, if you know, or how do you think my odds are? Because just go back to recruiters. They uh, got my basic info to start the medical screening. So just wondering, because if MHS Genesis is screwing a lot of recruits from joining and making the process months longer or longer, longer. Right. So you, Tyler, you need to watch my video here because I, I talk about uh, depression, ADHD, things of that nature. Now, if, if I understood your, your three comments here, like this one right here, it says, I, I'm taking that you're 29 years old and that this happened when you were 16 years old. So you might not even need a waiver because it was so far long ago, but depending on the records that you can acquire on, on this particular issue, and if you follow the tips in that video by seeing a behavior health specialist, I don't think you really, I would go to like, um, Spend like a month with like two to four sessions with a psychologist if your insurance can cover it and um, get the all clear from them that you are mentally uh, sound and combine that with the behavioral health evaluation and get both of them in accordance with how I stated in that video and all the original documents. You might not even need a waiver. You should be fine. Uh, and, and lately, that's what's been going on. In, in worst case scenario, you'll require a waiver. But uh, once they submit that waiver within 60 days or less, 
that waiver will come back and i'm pretty confident that you'll get a favorable result and you'll be able to join and i don't think that's ultimately going to prevent you from joining but again each person's unique circumstances will dictate uh the outcome uh, of your stuff so i appreciate you and uh thank you very much As I'm scrolling up, if you're new here, please like the video. Appreciate you as I'm looking for where I last left off. All right, so here. Um, Mikey B says, I think units have a big influence on leaders too. Yes, 100%. All right, so that was at 1948. Mikey B, I'll come back to you, okay? And I was in 1949. Got to go back to the bottom. We got another super chat coming in from Tyler, it looks like. So Tyler W also says, and thank you for super chat. Appreciate you. You didn't have to do that, but thank you very much. Correct. And I had a new psyche eval to disprove those diagnoses. And thanks for all the help. I'm sure the chat is grateful as as well yes thank you very much and um yeah if you got an updated psyche evaluation it, you should be good all right i know that some of the tips that i give might seem like overkill but again i'm just trying to mitigate any possible doubt that the cmo or the branch of service uh surgeon general could possibly have if, if it goes to a waiver uh so that you get a favorable outcome and you be able to join right but if you got a new updated uh psyche evaluation then in this case, because you're 29 years old now, and this happened when you were 12 or 16, you should be fine. And uh, hopefully you have like an applicant statement and maybe even some character references from like people that you directly work with, that you're reliable, dependable, and all that good stuff. Kind of like how I described in that video, you should be fine. My contacts are drying out. So Mikey B, appreciate you uh, as always. Uh, you're welcome, Mikey B. And um, I went and spoke with my local recruiters and they said I was failed with the leadership after active duty and being on temporary disability and was told not to come back to the reserve unit in Michigan. Uh, I will say this, I have not been happy since leaving the military the friendships and experiences are best hands down uh, that's unfortunate um that michigan unit was the 303 gotcha that was my reserve unit after active duty at fort knox working at the usa regional correctional facility i think the facility is no longer in service uh fort knox is no longer a basic training site for sure he also says, I also had the honor to serve with the Guantanamo in Cuba. That's cool. All right, man. Appreciate you. Sorry it didn't work out for you, but um, if you're eligible for a waiver, then go for it. You know what I mean? But thank you. Nathan says, I mean the softer approach to basic training. The leader who swapped the shark attack for the first 100 yards said it was outdated and that we are no longer in a Vietnam style conflict, but it seems uh, that we're close. Um, in, in all honesty, like if you actually research and, and watch like videos on the first 100 yards, I've actually talked to soldiers that experienced the first 100 yards and they said it's extremely physically demanding overtly demanding physically so i would although like i disagree with some of the sentiment of what he had to say about it it's kind of like a, a tradition at this point but i see the vision that he's talking about and the army does need to evolve adapt and you know overcome certain things because this is an all-volunteer force but um I feel like they should combine the two. I did a video on it. So if you go to the search bar, Team Swartz Shark Attack, you'll find my video. I'm like this in a blue background, yelling with the drill sergeant hat. But uh, I go more detail about it. Go check it out there. But 
it's got pros and cons. I like the first 100 yards, and I also like the shark attack. I don't think they should have gotten rid of the shark attack, but maybe do like a hybrid between the shark attack and the first 100 yards. That's just my personal opinion, though. Mad Energy says, what do you mean by limited on what you can say? So, again, I am in the military actively serving, so I have a voice, but it is limited. Like, I can't talk about certain things that may or may not make the military, DOD, or the affiliates look bad, right? So, I guess you kind of won't really fully understand until you join, but you are limited to some of the freedoms that regular citizens have because we do represent the military like for example next time you watch a political event at um in washington in like congress or whatever and there you got speakers up there talking about whatever like if you, if you ever watch them like talk about things like let's say for example you're watching a political thing on tv and the military is in the audience and let's say something good happened that even if it was for the military or whatever, something good happens, like people will stand up and applaud the president or whoever's talking like, yeah. And then you see the military in the back like this. They have to remain neutral, right? So we cannot be for or against anything political. We can't, we don't have a political opinion publicly. We could talk about it amongst our friends and battle buddies and so on and so forth. But again, we have a limited voice because we are representing the government. Uh, if that makes any sense and not really sure if I t articulated that in the best way possible, but uh, yeah, that's what we got. Uh, Oscar Vera says, I have a question. Can you join the army with an overbites? In most cases? Yes. I think I've only had maybe one person not make it in my almost 19 years of uh, recruiting experience, but uh, you should be fine. Will Witts. Thank you for the green heart. Appreciate you. Kevin Y says, hashtag team sports. Appreciate you. Can you change MOSs during your contract? Uh, during your contract? Yes. Before you ship out to basic training and AIT? No. Uh, or will it be after your initial contract to complete your want to re-up? So best case scenario in the middle of your contract. Worst case scenario at the end of your contract. <clears throat> The things you do for us, thank you. It means a lot. And I have so many questions. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Whit Will says, started above more. Started above more. Not really sure what that means. Oh, I remember now. I saw that. Jay says, take my ASVAB at MEPS on the 16th. Can't wait. Good luck, Jay. May the uh, MEPS gods forever be in your favor. All right. Make us proud. Eclipse 23, is the military taking waivers for possession of marijuana over 10 years old? I'm a CDL driver now and hazmat clearance. So if you have just one marijuana charge, conviction charge, then you can get a waiver. That's easy. But if you have two or more, last time I checked, I'll have to double check the, it's been a long time since I had somebody that had that, but um, two or more typically is non-waiverable, right? But one guilty or a conviction, you're fine. A waiver can be approved as long. Uh, it also depends on if you have other charges too, because that can factor into that as well. But uh, just one, you're good. It doesn't matter how f how far back it is. But um, yeah, astronomical says, how would you handle not getting chosen for Hawaii TDY? It seems like the supervisors are gatekeepers to the exciting two week TDYs. Yeah, so I missed my one and only opportunity to go to Hawaii. Long story short, it was summer of 2019. I was having an epic year and there was a challenge and I needed just one more person to join. I had somebody lined up. And I see some inappropriate comment, possibly. Homies and diamond. Huh?
Diamond. Do I need to... So I'm going to allow this one message to show. Misfit Infantry says, Diamond, great question. And homies, uh, y'all are so horny. Go DM each other. No one wants to listen to that. Uh, is something going on in the chat right now that's inappropriate? Please let me know. I'm kind of confused what's going on here. Look, I, I just approved one of the comments from somebody. What's unprovoked? I'm, I'm confused. Is, do I need to intervene or are we good in the chat? Because I don't want anyone being attacked. Diamond, are you talking to me or somebody else? Oh, okay. All right. Well, let me know if anyone's bothering you. Actually, you know what? Misfit Infantry. I think I've had issues with you in the past. I'm not too sure. I may be confusing with somebody else. Anyway, keep it clean in the chat box, y'all. This is nothing but a positive page here. All right, so back to the top where I was. Yeah, unfortunately, it sucks. And like I said, I had somebody lined up. They're, they were supposed to, to join in that time frame to qualify for that TDY trip to Hawaii. But they wanted to reschedule for a frivolous reason. And I'm not that type of recruiter to pressure someone to process sooner rather than later so i appeased them and uh i did not qualify for that trip unfortunately but yeah man you just got to be resilient let it roll off your shoulder i mean if you're in the military there's this thing called space a space available travel and you just have to pay the taxes to fly to to hawaii which is like a couple hundred bucks and you can fly just fine to hawaii and, and do your thing but you know there's a way and a will you you can make it happen NASCAR says, got a couple of questions tonight, so please don't hate on me. Not going to hate on you. That's why we're here. Oh, you like that, right? Hell yeah. Mikey. <laughs> Still healing. I hear you. <clears throat> Mira. Mira says, uh, is it Mira or Mira? Anyway, I apologize if I jacked it up, but you said. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chat box. Make sure nothing funny is going on. Yeah, positive environment for sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. So she, she asked, I retake the ASVAB at the end of the month and I have more confidence. They changed the minimum requirements past at least 16 to 31 to join for cat four program. Well, yeah, it's always been uh, 16 to 31. I think when I created my video uh, at the time, the regulation said 21, but they reduced it uh, around that time to 16. But yeah, if you can get into the cat four program, don't worry about it. Just go for it. As long as you have the line scores for the MOS you're trying to get, then you're good to go. All right. But um, they're talking about dropping the 09 mic uh, requirement from 21 down to 16 too. So if you just wait it out a couple more weeks uh, to the end of the month, that might be an option for you too. And that might be a better option depending on your unique circumstances. Uh, 
Uh, NASCAR says, at basic training, do they have letters and stamps at the PX? Yes, they do. And you can check out the basic training reception video, and I go more into the Troop Exchange store where you can purchase those uh, said items and, and more. Uh, for a cat four, it's 16, but, uh, for zero nine Mike and for the flurry, it's 21 or, or above currently NASCAR says, is there a rucksack at basic training that the army gives me? Yes. They're going to give you a large rucksack and a medium rucksack. Jonathan R says any cyber security units in the New York army national guard. Uh, they have a civilian position like a, like a technician position in cybersecurity in the, in the national guard. But as an MOS, as a soldier, no, the only thing I have is a 17 echo. And in my personal opinion, it's not cybersecurity. Basically cy uh, 17 echo from my understanding when I asked around about it is basically, let's say you're traveling down the road, you have a device inside the vehicle that blocks radio type frequencies to prevent people from detonating a, a a remote ied with cell phones and so forth so they like let's say they have an ied improvised explosive device in the middle of the road during your convoy this is supposedly supposed to block the cell signals and anything like that if that makes sense uh also ask when do we get our address at basic training ait when you get to basic training ait they'll give it to you then uh mikey b says where are where I am confused is how I have seen some soldiers with a missing limp still serving, but I was kicked to the curb when things are not easy uh, to let go for sure. Yeah. So it's like if you're already in, there's like a lot of leeway to what is acceptable. As long as you're deployable, then you're good. Like the army had already invested hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not a million dollars in you over the course of your career. So it's cheaper to keep her. And uh, they're invested in you, if that makes sense. But as a new person coming in, the requirements are high. And um, if they can help it, they'd rather not have to pay out VA compensation for the rest of your life uh, by accepting that medical condition. So it really depends on your unique circumstance. So I know you've been here. I posted it several times in the chat. It's in the description. Look up my medical waiver uh, thing and, and check that out and see if that relates to to your unique circumstance or situation and hopefully you find that helpful mira says yes my recruiter informed me yesterday but he said he's not sure if it's a permanent change gotcha uh gary hernandez will reception bs tough try to incriminate you as meps they have this thing called moment of truth and uh yeah they try to get you to admit whatever so um Live or die by your lie if you do end up lying. But uh, yeah, so the moment of truth is where they're trying to get you after that. And as long as everything else is clear, you're good to go. NASCAR, can I have a computer at AIT as a 91 Bravo? Yes, I would have that as like a care package that gets mailed to you once you're at AIT and you get your mailing address, if that makes sense. Jay says, uh, I'm bad at test taking no matter how hard I study. So I uh, hope I can get, get a 21. I hope so too. Uh, I'm rooting for you. NASCAR also says, can I bring my own lock for my locker at basic training? Yes. In fact, I have a whole basic training packing list video right here. Go check that out. I actually suggest that you bring two different locks, one for your luggage and one for your wall locker as described in the video. So go check that out along with some other tips. What is going on in the chats tonight? I'm probably going to have to get a moderator. This is a uh, cray cray.
chat box is going crazy tonight. Diamond Hawkins, you're not doing anything wrong. You're good. You don't have to leave. Listen, if you don't have anything nice to say about somebody else, keep it to yourself. All right, so back to the stream. All right. So Mikey B says, I actually joined the Battle Buddy system. Is that still a thing? For active duty, yes. Maybe even reserve, but not for the National Guard. We just don't have enough within our state to fill a whole platoon at a specific day, if that makes sense. Mira also says, same. I've been studying since I failed the first one. I hate taking the test. I agree. Colton Kesselute says, once you pass everything to get into basic training, do they send you to one that is closer to you or kind of MOS related? It is MOS related, meaning that they look for a basic training end date and the uh, AIT start date, and it's got to be within three weeks of each other. And as long as multiple options pop up that meet that criteria, then you more or less pick a ship date as long as it's within three months. But if there's only one ship date, you're good to go. Uh, that'll be your only option. But if there's no ship dates available, then you're going to have to change your MOS. Mira says, I just got to get better with math, 100%. John Smith says, is there a green to gold program within the guard or is it reserve? Thank you. Yes, it's army wide, 100%. NASCAR also says, I am allowed to bring allergy medicine like Benadryl that is unprescribed to basic. It's for tree nut allergy. No, you won't be able to bring it with you. Uh, that will get confiscated from you at the uh, reception battalion when you get received. Hey, Simon, I get that you're very motivated to uh, post these comments, but if you don't relax, then um, I'm going to have to put you on timeout, put you in the corner. I'm going to put baby in the corner, as they say. Uh, yeah, don't bring your checkbook. Your bank account can track all your expenses. Um, Mikey B says, do you remember me bringing up the subject of me getting a temporary disability rating after active duty, then joining the reserves and after training with the unit almost? Yes. I remember that story hundred percent. And that was an unfortunate story. That sucks. Uh, uh, I was told not to come back because I was receiving temporary disability. Yeah, I remember I did accidentally. Yeah, it's fine. I feel like it's the mental part of basic training that is the hardest, honestly. Just my opinion, though. Look up. Mm, that flower. Um, getting clean off of Mary Jane and since losing weight, I am still popping hot after three months of being clean. Is there something I can do to... Uh, to alert the recruiter or should I just wait? Do not do your medical exam until you're a 100% clean, all right? So with that being said, drink a gallon of water a day, do 30 to 45 minutes of cardio every single day. That will help expedite the process of detoxing your body naturally. Do not take any elixirs or um, detox teas, drinks, pills, or anything like that because it could give you a false positive and sometimes it could come up in the, in the drug test that you took something to um, get rid of uh, the toxins in your body. So uh, to be honest with you, if you're like a, a, a 
an excessive consistent smoker like you smoke daily multiple times per day that could take 90 90 days or longer right it's not uncommon and if you didn't drink a lot of water and you had other toxins like maybe you smoked cigarettes and drank alcohol and hookah those are all toxins that are inside your body so it could take you a while to get it out but probably shouldn't be that much longer in my opinion in my opinion Getting some weirdos here tonight. I had to block someone from the channel. Jeez Louise. All right. Jaden Contreras, channel member, says, in the event of activation within the state or officers activated within the enlisted soldiers or do officers not get as many opportunities to be activated within the state? No. So if, you're, if, if your unit is being activated for a state mission, then yes, absolutely. Uh, an officer can be um, – they activate it as well. Now, as far as like getting a full-time job outside of an activation, yes, those are farther and fewer in between, but it could be possible. You just have to monitor your state's um, job listings, all right? However they post it. All right. Oh, hang on. Where was I? I was at 806. Okay. Got another super chat coming in from the most popular person in the chat box tonight. And that is Diamond Hawkins. Thank you so much for, again, supporting my channel. And she says, for the Mary Jane question, if you have super, super faint line, do you think it's still considered a pass? I consider it a pass. 99.9% nine, .9 of the time, you'll pass at MEPS. It is just in your best interest to wait until you have a solid line. But I've... Uh, Somehow they've passed every single time. But as long as there's a faint, faint line, that is a pass. But if you want to be certain, you want to be sure, wait until you get a solid line. But again, I've processed and never had any issues with somebody that had a faint line on the drug test. I would probably take two or three drug tests just to make sure that they're all registering the same thing and it's not just a fluke. I'm going to have to block this person too. Man, we got some really weirdos tonight. I am definitely going to have to get a moderator. And, um... Oh, for sure. The creeps are coming out tonight. Um, we got another one from uh, Diamond Hawkins. Man, don't give me your life savings, girl. Uh, geez, another one? Hang on, I got to block somebody else. I don't really want you guys to see what this per these people are posting. It's very inappropriate. Let me hide it or block this person too. All right, that person just got blocked. Yeah, I don't know what's going on today. It's like, let's go mess with Lewis today. Um, but yeah, she says, uh, I have a super faint line when I'm taking it at the recruiting office. Yeah, in my opinion, you're good to go. But again, I would just wait it out another week until it gets solid just to be sure. Because here, here, here it is. You could take the risk and because it's a MEPS drug test, if you fail, you still have the opportunity to come back, but you got to wait 90 days. So what sounds better, waiting in a, another week or two to get a solid line or waiting 90 days? So you do what you think that your future rank can handle, if that makes sense. Clean since December. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're good. Yeah, don't chance it. I see you. All right, so I highly doubt that Mikey B. <laughs> highly doubt that. Um, let's see. 
Cuddle says, getting clean off of Mary Jane. Oh, we already talked about that. Uh, Jaden says, in the event of act. Oh, you already talked about that. Jesus. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what do I? Oh, Miguel says, good, good, good question. If you're still here. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what do you need to do to prepare yourself for army based training? I have a whole video about that coming in the chat box. And it's also in the, in the description area as well. NASCAR fan says, what happens to my ship date? If bad weather causes my flight gets moved, does my contract get renegotiated? No, your contract does not get renegotiated. It just takes you a little bit longer to get to the training site. And when you get there, you'll be in process as uh, you normally would. And you'll drive on. No, no big deal. Mikey B says, I do not know what to do with this anger I feel because I wanted to retire out of the service. But yeah, man, uh, I, I feel you. I, I really do. Uh, let's see. Members have color and things next to their name. Yep, 100%. So it depends on the branch of service you're getting into, but the army supposedly will take you up before your 44th birthday if you're otherwise qualified. So just food for thought. Preston Jacob says, I was trying to qualify for financial tech 36 Bravo with the one on one clerical ASVAB score. So, uh, fun fact if you're still here, Preston who you still are to be able to get this but you can get a line score waiver uh easily for five points all right whether or not active duty reserve does it i know the guard we could do it easily we do it on a regular basis but for this particular job we'll allow a five point telephonic uh waiver so that means all you need is a 96 so as long as you score 96 and above then we can get you that mos as long as it's otherwise available in your area so on and so forth as described in my jobs video Mr. Grape says, what's going on? So the doctors at MEPS are asking for my medical records for my physicals from my pediatrician from 17 years ago. I called and they purged the documents, unsure what to do. So Mr. Grapes, all you got to do is go to the records department and tell them to type up a memorandum on official letterhead stating that all records, again, just like you just said, have been purged and no longer available. And with that letter, like, oh, I'll backtrack a little bit. Same thing. So they're going to say that, yes, uh, Mr. Grapes was a patient here at ABC, uh, clinic or whatever. And all records from over 10 years ago have been, uh, terminated, expunged, purged, whatever the case may be. Right. And there are no records available. And then you bring that back to your recruiter, you submit it to MEPS. And depending on the medical condition in question, do an applicant statement. And what I would also do is get one of your parents, like your mom or your dad, to also do a handwritten note, like an applicant statement, or in this case, a parent statement, basically saying at this age, uh, they, you were diagnosed with ABC. The prognosis and diagnosis was this. Uh, the course of action was this. You were cleared by this time doing ABC, yada, yada, yada. So basically you explain everything and, and add your statement, your parent statement, and the no medical records found uh, letter from that clinic or institute, whatever the case may be, and submit all that back to your recruiter to submit to MEPS and you should be fine. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I've been hearing that they have pilot programs going on, but I haven't gotten anything official from the drill sergeants at uh, Fort Benning, so I'm not really sure, but I have applicants that have DM'd me st stating to me that their paperwork says 14 weeks. So I don't know if it's true or not, but just throwing that out there for you. So Jayan Luke says, if you apply for SMP program, 
and go off to basic training. When are you brought back to the university? It will be starting college in late fall this year, graduate high school, June 6. So you would do, if you're joining the guard or reserve, then you would do basic training over the summertime, start your ROTC in the fall. And that would eliminate the requirement of doing the ROTC's version of the basic camp. So that would eliminate that, uh, that requirement through the ROTC. But other than that, you're good to go. So it would be between summer with a mandatory return date to be back in time for the fall semester. Scott says, I finished basic and I have one week left in AIT in Fort Leonard Wood. My contract has a $20,000 bonus attached to it for enlisting the reserves. How do I go about receiving my bonus? So once your MO is qualified and you're in your, in your unit of assignment, then at time of in processing to your new unit, you would tell them that you got a bonus and your unit needs to initiate uh, your initial or only payment, depending on how uh, it's spelled out in your addendum. NASCAR says, can you explain what the loan repayment program is with the active duty army? Uh, it's in my booklet. I got from maps where the other two in there is in Montgomery GI Bill and post 9 11. So yeah, I mean, your addendum is going to spell everything out for you, but basically how it works is uh, you have to be MOS qualified. At least for the guard, uh, your addendum will say any if it's anything different for active duty, but a year after you sign your contract, as long as your MOS qualified, every year from that point forward on the anniversary date, you'll receive up to 15% or $7,500, whichever one comes first, maximum payout towards the principal of your uh, student federal student loans All right, that are in good standing. Anything that had been in default or private or personal uh, loans or like credit cards, it won't count. It's got to be federal student loans. And um, then you'll receive that over the course of six or eight years, depending on how long you sign up for. And that's pretty much how it works. The other 11 months, it's on you. So it's not quite as lucrative as advertised, but that's how it works. But check out your addendum for all the nitty gritty details, the do's, the don'ts, and the what ifs. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Yes, Joe Sargents are still just as intense as ever before. I agree. You're very welcome, Anom Anomaly. And totally agree with you, because if once you become non-deployable, then you'll be discharged. So yeah, we have recruiters that process enlisted soldiers and general like basic officers. If somebody wants to become a medical officer, a JAG officer, a chaplain corps officer, um, or one officer for like flight warrant. And I think I may be missing one, but all of those have to go through a specialty recruiter, uh, OSM, right? Officer strength manager. So that's how that works. So in those unique fields, yes, they'll need a special commissioning officer but for a normal, regular officer. Then a, a normal recruiter can process you. As long as they're you, me, as long as they're otherwise eligible to join and we can communicate with them, I definitely wouldn't go guard or reserve. If you're homeless, go active duty. That would be your best bet. Again, as long as you're otherwise eligible to join, you're good to go. Doesn't matter if you're homeless. Makes it difficult to fill out the F80, SF-86, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I think the only time you might be separated is if you are prior service and that has a time limit, I believe, that not really sure what you guys are talking about there, but cuddles. As long as you meet the basic eligibility requirements, 
other than the ASVAB test, then you're good to go. Yes, at the end of your contract, worst case scenario, you can change your MOS, 100% Giuseppe. Preston asks, if you are certain you want an MOS, is there a required delayed entry program for active duty army? Also, what happens if you aren't able to attend this program? So, DEP programs are not mandatory, although recruiters will try to make it mandatory or make you feel like it's mandatory, but there's nothing obligating you to do it. You're not in paid status. You're not required to be there. And uh, that's that. If you want a certain MOS, then it goes by your line scores. I'll repost it in the chat box if you're still here, Preston. All our great videos, if you are thinking about joining us, watch. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Mira says, you can change your MOS after your contract is up. Yep, 100%. I don't know where you're getting that from because I have three MOSs. I started out my career as a human resources specialist. I'm a crane operator as an engineer. I'm a recruiting and retention NCO, and I'm, I have the skill identifier, hold the skill identifier for a uh, army drill sergeant. So you're incorrect in your uh, statement there, Con Keith Didor. A Nissan Juke, how do you do the ACFT? Um, you like Nike. You just do it. <laughs> Not really sure how you mean that question. Like, is that real or are you just messing with me? Yeah. Do you plan on keeping the channel running after you finish the Army career? Absolutely. I want to make this my full-time gig. You know what I'm saying? Fox shot. Uh, no, not for me. Uh, Preston says, what dental uh, would they take care of at MEPS? I have a chip tooth. They don't do anything at MEPS. Yeah, that's definitely not done on MEPS. Uh, you won't get braces at the training site either. If you're going active duty, you could get that when you get to your first duty station, as long as you're not being deployed. But as far as like like cavities and stuff like that, you can get that stuff done while at the reception battalion or throughout basic training. And Eve Barris is active duty 11 Bravo, about a year and a half out and thinking about transitioning to the Air Force. Air Force, is it possible or is it uncommon? It's not uncommon. It's possible. And uh, all you got to do is talk to an act, uh, active duty or reserve or Air National Guard recruiter. Uh, I would probably say start the process about 60 to 90 days out before you ETS. And I highly recommend that you get your PHA under six months from the time that you are about to uh, process out of the active duty service. Furthermore, be very, very careful about your VA disability claims when leaving active duty. At least for the guard, if you're 30 or over 30% rated for your disability, you're ineligible for joining. Just food for thought. If you're still here, hopefully you are. So you can see that. Denny says, took the test today. Didn't have many questions. I think it started with an A. It was something for the National Guard. Do you know what the name is? I think what you're talking about is maybe the tapas, but it starts with a T, not an A, but tapas. It's like a personality test. They give you like two negative comments and you have to choose which one best describes you. Like, for example, I don't work well with others or I get angry easily. And you have to choose the lesser of the two evils or whatever. Maybe that's what you mean. Jaina says, you think I can IST from South Carolina to North Carolina, or do you think that my chain of command will think that it's a short for, no, if you ETS into another state or ETSing, if you're IST into another state, you're IST into another state, they cannot deny you an IST to another state. So yes, I have a whole video on it and then mm -hmm. tips and tricks and insights and recommendations.
So Diamond Hawkins, can you ban accounts in the chat fake pages of me? Well, now that you're a channel member, it's easy to see the fake account. Let me see if I see anything with your name that doesn't have that. Okay, I see it. Maybe that's what the issue was earlier. I'm glad you're a channel member because it's easy to identify the fakes. All right, I just blocked that person. So unless they create another account, they won't be able to... See, that's why I need to get verified on this account. Because God forbid somebody pretends to be me. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah, so I see I see one account. I, I blocked them, so it shouldn't be there anymore, Diamond. They keep making them. I'm going to move the phone closer so I can pay more attention to the comments. I've reported two accounts. Got you. This is nuts. What's going on tonight? This is like the first time ever that a fake account mimics somebody that was on here. It's further up. All right, let me go further up. I think it's the same account. I highly doubt they created two accounts. You might mean like the other comment about Mexicans may have been further up, but if the, if it was the same account and I blocked that one account, all the other uh, comments that was from that person gets removed. Two different accounts with your name. I do have a Discord. Um, let's see if it still works. I forgot the quick text for it, but Diamond Hawkins, I, I think I got. I think I got the account. So unless they create another account, but I'm just glad you're a channel member. There you go. That way it's easy uh, to identify them. Stop being weirdos on the internet. That's funny. <laughs> you're very welcome, Diamond, and I appreciate you. And I, it's sad that you had to super chat me to see that. Uh, where was I? 822, I think it was. All right, so Chef Fake says, why won't weed be federally legal if a lot of young people want to join? Well, until it becomes federally legal, it's not going to be legal in the military. And even then, I'm not really sure. Mm, let me see something. My eyes are really, really drying out with the contacts. Um, I'm not sure if I created a quick text for my Discord, but um, who's asking for it again? Oh, Mr. Grapes. Uh, if you direct message me on Instagram, I'll send you the link to my Discord. I don't open it because I barely use it. I don't really know how to leverage it or whatever, but I find it more. I don't know. Um, 
Like I have a hard enough time trying to keep up with the YouTube comments and Instagram comments and everywhere else I have my platforms. But um, yeah. Yes, with a waiver, hundred percent. Not sure what you mean by thirty-one Bravo question mark. So you need the line scores for it. So if you go to my jobs video, if you're still here, go in the description area, download the Excel sheet, plug in your line scores, and that'll tell you if you pre-qualify for the military police or not. Or if you just Google MOS 31B, click on either the goarmy.com uh, website or the nationalguard.com website. And it'll tell you what the line score requirements are for 31 Bravo. And you must qualify for a secret clearance. Trying to become a 91 Bravo. Cool stuff. I can't move the tips of my ring and pinky finger on the right hand, but doesn't affect me at all and disqualify me. Yes, because during the medical exam, they're going to make you do this. All right. And if you can't move them and close you into a fist, you're not going to be able to pass medical. And that waiver is going to get the, uh, denied, unfortunately. You don't need your passport to join the military. But if you want to go to Hawaii or somewhere else, if that was you from earlier, then, yeah, you would need uh, a pass. Well, no, you don't need a passport. If you're a U.S. citizen and you're traveling to Hawaii, then you don't need a passport to go to Hawaii. Only if you're going outside of the, the country. There's like a conversation going on. So all medications, if it pops up, need to be justified and hopefully a waiver is authorized. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. In my experience before Jackson, I feel like it lacked on discipline at my AIT site, but the PT, physical training, was way more challenging than my basic training experience at Fort Knox. I totally agree with that statement. Anomaly says, when they do the dental work at reception, do they put you to sleep or is it shots in the gums? Most likely shots in the gums, but it, it, it obviously depends on the circumstances and what avenue of approach that they take. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Riley. I guess I didn't see that. Luigi says, sent an on-screen DM to a unique situation of being 34, master's degree, already passing maps for the Navy, got denied age waiver for the Navy and trying to get into the Army OCS now. Appreciate the advice. All right, cool. I'll look into it. Uh, paratrooper is not an MOS, but if it's a specialty school, sometimes they may have like a GT line score requirement of like a 110 or better. You might want to look into that. You could probably Google that. I don't have it off the top of my head, but... I could ask around. Uh-oh, hang on. Who's the fake account? Here we go. Blocked. Man, they must be really, really bored to create a Gmail account just to do that. That is nuts. That is a first on this channel. Jonathan R., I have no idea what the uh, cyber program in New York does. So we got to... Oh, hang on. Let me find out where I was first before I go address the super chat.
I didn't even look at what time I was before I left. Hang on, guys. Hang on. I'm trying to find out where I was. So I'm just trying to scroll up to where I was. Okay, here we go. So I was at 8.30 exactly. All right. So we got a super chat that came in from Jose Barato. Can you talk about the current bonus for enlistment? So I'm not sure if you're going active duty, guard, or reserve, but active duty have various programs in place that one could maximize up to $50,000. That is... MOS specific, how fast you ship out, duty station of choice, if you get like specialty schools attached like airborne, air assault, uh, ranger, stuff like that. And um, with the guard and reserve, the maximum you can get for a enlistment bonus is $20,000, which is MOS specific, um, contract length specific, and what else? ASVAB, contract. Oh, and uh, vacancy specific. Like, it's got to be a true vacancy. So, for guard specifically, because that's my SME, subject matter expert stuff, I can't really speak on exactly specific how the active duty and reserve do it. But for the National Guard, there is like three to five primary MOSs on the critical skills list for the state of New York. It's going to be state specific to which MOSs are on that list. But so it's got to be on the list for critical skills. You got to score a 50 or better on the ASVAB and it's got to be a true vacancy, meaning that no other person can be sitting in that slot. So let's say uh, furthermore, let's say the unit has the MOS, but they're over 100 percent strength, meaning let's say there's uh, 100 people allowed in that unit. If they're at 101 or better, then no people, no person that's going into that unit will find a true vacancy because the unit is completely filled and then some. So like, for example, here in the New York City area, almost every single unit is filled up, meaning we're at like 130% or better in units. So we have to get permission to put people into excess positions to get MOSs of, or job skills of choice. They're just not going to get a bonus. So like for like the New York City area, if you're looking to get a $20,000 bonus, you better drive. You better be willing to drive upwards to like two, two and a half hours north of here to like Kingston, New York and anything in between. But basically most of our MOSs that have bonuses here in the lower state of New York are going to be outside of the city going towards upstate. So it's very difficult to get a true vacancy for any one of those MOSs. So it's very difficult, at least in the New York Army National Guard. But again, it's state specific. I do plan on doing a extensive uh, video on the bonuses specifically for the National Guard. But yeah, so that's what we're working with. Okay, so well, hopefully that addresses your question. Adrian, thank you so much for the super chat as well. And I'm going to address your question. Is parental leave paid? And can I get if get it if I go to basic training in April and baby comes in September? So this is going to be, what do we call it? Um, this is going to be uh, command specific. So when you're baby is born they can put in like a, a red cross message requesting that you come home for the birth of your of your child and it's up to your chain of command at the training site to approve said leave now once you complete your mos training and you get let's say you're active duty and you are 
going to your first duty station, you can request to use your, if you if you're male, paternity leave. If you're a female, which you're not, it doesn't sound like it, maternity leave. So paternity leave right now, I think is three months of paternity leave. And you can put that, put in for that anytime within the first 12 months of the child's birth. And uh, that's how that works. So at the training site during basic training, I would not expect them to, to send you home, but it really is um, up to the chain of command and just be, pre be prepared for them to lack empathy and deny your request. And if they do approve it and you leave the basic training environment or AIT or OSA, just understand that when you go back, you're being recycled. You're going to go to a different battalion, different battery, a whole new platoon, basically, with all new trainees and new drill sergeants. You're not going to be able to continue your training because you're going to miss basic training requirements while you're away. So hopefully I block the right Mr. Grapes. So that yeah, they just created a fake page. So Adrian, I hope hopefully that answers your question and I appreciate you supporting the channel. Yes, um, it is separate from your, so going back to your new super chat. Is it paid leave? Yes, and it's separate from your normal, ordinary uh, paid vacation time or leave. So you get 30 days of normal va uh, vacation time called leave. So parental leave is in addition to that. All right, if that makes sense. And I got another super chat coming in from Jose D. Bar uh, Barato. I jacked up your last name. I'm sure I did, but I apologize. But um, so yeah, so it, it's also state specific. So like here in the New York Army National Guard, Kingston is like the furthest nor north of where I am that they'll allow you to travel safely without an exception from the commander of a unit that is further away. So the state policy is no more than two hours of driving or two hours of being transported through uh, public transportation. Some states are different. So let, let's say their units are like further and farther in between. They could have like a four hour time frame or something like that. So again, that's going to be uh, state specific. But for the New York Army National Guard, that's pretty much how it works here. But I agree with you. But here, here's my thing when it comes to bonuses. Money's not that important. I mean, it's right up there next to oxygen, but never, ever, and I cannot convey this more than I'm probably stating now, but do not join the military for a specific job just because of money. I genuinely want you to join for an MOS that you think that you're going to like rather than chasing money because a lot of times you'll get the money, you'll spend the money, and now you're left with a job that you don't like and you're going to hate life, especially if you're active duty. So please heed my warning. Don't choose an MOS just for money. Choose an MOS because that's what you want to do. And if it happens to qualify for a bonus and you get the bonus, well, then guess what? It's a bonus. Merry Christmas. Hopefully that makes sense.
Correct. If you need a moral waiver, you're not going to qualify for a bonus. Mr. Grapes, if you go on your computer and you go onto my page, you'll see an icon that says join. That's how you become a, 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 a channel member. Um, but let's see, where was I? It was exactly 8.30. <laughs> Osama Bin Chopin says I'm a, I'm a boss. Nah, I'm just an average guy. That's it. Hold over for basic? Um, no more than a couple of weeks, really. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I'm really digging the be all that you can be. It's way better than what they had in previous years. 2031, so 2033. Jose, um, 32 Bravo. I'm not sure what a 32 Bravo is. I think you mean 36 Bravo, like finance. I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but I, there's no such thing as a 32 Bravo based on my really, really quick uh, Google search. But let me go back up to where I was. Chapa says, is mechanized infantry a job in the army and how do I get into it? Mechanized infantry is uh, a type of unit and you don't really get to choose whether or not you're mechanized infantry. So when you go through the enlistment process uh, for active duty, based on the needs of the army is where you go. So you could be light infantry, mechanized infantry, so on and so forth. But if you go in the guard, then your guard recruiter should know, well, maybe not because... I didn't know for years that one of ours was mechanized and what most of uh, most of ours are uh light infantry so like delta company the 69th infantry here in like the long island area they're the only mechanized infantry in our area everyone else is light infantry so um but yeah so hopefully your guard recruiter should know but active duty like i said it's based on the needs of the army mikey b says strong mind strong body hell yeah michael Dio Televi says, when you said that I made fun of you on Instagram last week, I think you might have gotten confused with someone else because I do not have an Instagram. Oh, no worries. For some reason, I thought you were him, but disregard. My bad. Your fault. It's now called BLC, Basic Leadership Course. And no, I didn't skip you, my friend. Bubba Joe says, I had a misdemeanor charge in 2012 that has been waived. Does this disqualify me from bonuses? Yes. If you have a moral waiver, then you are ineligible for bonuses or any other type of incentive like the student loan repayment program, so on and so forth. Sorry. And Jose said 36 Bravo. All right, cool. Let me see what you said. Are you otherwise qualified or did the recruiter identify some sort of medical issue, legal issue with like law violations or anything like that? Because 36 Bravo, unless, uh, I mean, I don't know. As long as you're qualified, recruiter is not going to hold on to it. They're going to process you immediately. Nicholas Sausage says, uh oh, hang on. All right, I thought something was going on in the chat box, but I guess we're good. All right, so 
My lifelong dream is to be in the police work. I just lack the confidence. Will the army build my mental confidence? I think it will. It did for me. I was a very shy, timid kind of soldier in training. And over time, the army has definitely made me more resilient, confident. I stand taller when I'm in uniform. I definitely overcame my fear of public speaking, obviously, because I'm a drill sergeant. I'm a recruiter. You got to be in, um, in people's faces and, you know, exchange some dialogue and so on and so forth so yes at least in my experience it did but you have to be willing to grow and accept and in in and, and, and put forth effort into everything that you do if that makes sense ramon says is it necessary to become an officer in order to operate a helicopter so it, it so like in the army warrant officers are the flights uh the flight operators right we don't use commission officers for that. Any other branch of service, though, most branches of services will use regular commission officers, but for the army, it's warrant officers. Kevin Sting, how soon can I get veterans preference points on a job application in the guard without prior service? Uh, it's probably, I'll have to get like, like I wanna give you an accurate response so let me do some research. And I'll let you know. I want to say like maybe six years part time, um, but I'm not 100% sure how employers or civil service tests view it. Usually for civil service tests, like if you're trying to get points for like a police officer, firefighter, EMT, stuff like that, usually it's two years of active duty to get veteran preference or points. Usually. So that's going to be like department de dependent on whether or not they accept the Guard or Reserve as experienced as being a veteran, if that makes sense. Now, if you retire from the Guard or Reserve and you do it, then yes, you're considered a veteran at that point. But usually, typically, it's two years of active duty service. Somebody's claiming to be me. You mother flower. I got you. Say less, fam. Boom. Ha, sucker. You guys see that? Try to be me. Everybody trying to be like Mike. Mr. Graves, welcome to the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, man. Definitely wacky Wednesday for sure. Maybe this is the uh, after 9 p.m. shenanigans. Downside of being popular, I guess. I guess. They say you don't make it until people try to be you. So let's welcome Mr. Grapes to the channel members only team. I guess. <laughs> Thank you uh, for becoming a team member. It does make it easier to spot the uh, the spammers out there. And he says, shebang, it ain't no one going to try to be Mr. Grapes the best round. Again, that's right. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let me go back to where I was. I was at around 2038. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Graves. I appreciate you. <laughs> welcome, Graves from Dime. That's awesome. Okay, so Icon809 just came home from Marine Corps basic training, coming back home with a lot of stress. Uh-oh. Feel free to direct message me. Maybe I can give you some words of encouragement. Maybe address some of your concerns or thoughts that are stressing you out and maybe we can take it from there so at team swartz on instagram team swartz just signed 19 delta ship out on the 21st any tips um yeah just get your mind right in fact uh watch this video i mean it's too late to get physically prepared but watch my basic training pre preparation video best ways to prepare for basic training and watch the videos from the basic training mini series just 
understand that yellow phase and the COVID restrictions and stuff like that is no longer a thing. So just omit that part of the videos. Yeah, it would have been cool. Would have been cool. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. And sometimes you got to decide for yourself on whether or not uh, it's worth it for you. Sometimes it's something that we aspire to do, but it just doesn't make sense. And, uh, you know, maybe it's just not in your cards. You know what I mean? Premier of Amira. Hi, how are you? Smelly Meadow. Hell, how different is the Canadian Army? I'm not sure. I don't know anything about the Canadian Army to be 100 with you. Tyler says, so if I was misdiagnosed, I already talked about that. Not really sure. Erdahl says, three weeks left to graduation at AIT. What advice would you give for the first unit in IT Yankee? Thank you. So when it comes to uh, getting to your unit of assignment, first impressions are lasting impressions, all right? So wear your best uniform, buy a new uniform if need be. But usually if you're going active duty, you get to DX or basically get rid of your worn out, stained, unserviceable uniforms before you leave so wear your best uniform get rid of all the the strings uh, uh, of when it was um manufactured or whatever have your, your you know fresh name tapes whatever if needed but at minimum iron your uniform okay at, uh, at minimum iron your uniform don't just take it out of the washer and dryer and it's all wrinkly and stuff wear your best boots i suggest that you get third-party boots i happen to love the the oakley's I'll probably do like a review soon like that will be attached to an affiliate link or whatever possibly but i really love the oakley's they look like this all right these are my favorite the reason why i have to replace my boots is look at the bottom they're worn the hell out <laughs> um but yeah those are my favorite maybe one two days breaking period but super minimal they don't really make your feet sore at all if i recall the four other pairs that i've wore before this like i said very minimal um break-in period it's literally like a day or two and, and you're fine and they're super super light very very comfortable i wouldn't necessarily wear them on a deployment even i've never been deployed but super soft uh soles and very super comf comfortable and very light on the feet I'm glad you got 42 Alpha. That's a good MOS. Yeah, unfortunately that happens and it's super annoying because people think I'm skipping their question and I don't. Yep, 100%. Yeah, 100%. It does. I got you, man. I got you. Is that, hang on, let me see. Is something going on in the chat? No, we're good. Okay. So, uh, is that bad? I go to more than one recruiter. I look to the Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, National Guard, Army. Is that a no-no? No, no it's not a no-no. You're, 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 you're shopping around. That's fine. You're making a very well-informed decision. So a video I would have you watch is don't join the army until you watch this video because I talk about how you can maximize your efforts in researching one or multiple branches of services and how to decide one or the other. You're leveraging the Benjamin Franklin decision-making process towards the end of that video. So definitely go check that out if you have the time. But uh, yeah. Definitely research your options if that's something that is uh, of interest to you.
<laughs> That's funny. Ryan Skinner says, miss you. Hashtag Team Swords. Appreciate that, buddy. You are awesome. And your advice got me through basic training. Recommend you to anyone going to the Army. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Much love. Khan Keef Dador says, I'm choosing Swartz because I like he takes time to give advice to us outside of his normal responsibilities to the guard. Appreciate that. That means a lot to me. And uh, I enjoy doing this for y'all. Sorry, I'm just scrolling down because there's a conversation going on. Yeah, 13F is still around. 13 Fox is still around. Local Ken, I'm not sure what meow is the timing. Sam, yes, you can. And you can go into the ING, Inactive National Guard, which is like putting pause on your contract for up no more than 12 months. And But it, your contract will get extended for how many months, weeks, and days that, it, that you're in there. Distings, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for continuing to watch me and for tuning in and all that stuff. Echo 7 Sierra, appreciate uh, your compliment. Thank you. So Gumbo says, I just finished 68 whiskey training and about to go home in two days. It, it was an absolute blast and a great experience. Made lots of long lifelong friends. Ah, that's awesome. I love it when people have positive experiences, 100%. That's true. I hope it works out for you, Mikey B, 100%. No, I didn't ign ignore your question. There you go. Just what that person said. So, yes, Ryan uh, Pull Pullman, if you're still here, check out this video. Right here. Check out that video. It really depends on the medication and the diagnosis. It's specific. Like there's a plethora of reasons someone can um, have issues with their medication or whatever. JC Spectro, Spec Spectro, a little late, but it's been a while. Uh, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you very much. Uh, Alex Gonzalez, um, watch my MEPS video. Just ignore the Emerald references in this video if you're still here. Doubt it because that was like an hour and a half ago. All right, so. So secret sounds, check out this video, guard versus reserve. 
I'm going to slide that into the chat box for you to check out and you can decide for yourself which one's better for your reasons and your reasons alone. You can also check out this video here about the Army National Guard shooting it straight. You can check out those two videos and that'll help you make a well-informed decision. Justin Parsons, basically, uh, if it goes through this and they say that it is equivalent to a high school diploma, then or a four-year degree rather in the U.S., then you're good to go. Uh, as of right now, I'm fully uh, recovered. I'm not in pain or anything, uh, Diamond Hawkins. But um, I think I still have one more week to follow my diet, and then I should be good. But I have to—I finally got confirmation for my um, referral to go see a gastritis, and then I'll get the official word of how bad it is if it's still here, or if I'm 100% uh, in the clear. So I'll definitely keep you updated. No worries, Mike B. Appreciate you uh, tuning in here. But with that being said, I'm um, going to have to hit the road. I went an hour and 34 minutes over. You can definitely shoot me your questions or concerns that I did not get to tonight in the stream if you're still here. My Instagram is at Team Swartz. Or you can email me at TeamSwartzMedia at gmail.com. But I do highly recommend and prefer and suggest that you direct message me on Instagram at team Swartz. I answer and address every single DM emails. I'm not so uh, perfect over there. I miss them or don't or get around to them in a timely fashion. But those of you who have direct message me can attest that within a few days, I will get to you and I do respond to you thoroughly. I don't just like give you a blanket, easy statement. Like, I give you a thorough response. So I appreciate y'all. Um, no, they're not going to get rid of uh, Genesis at all. I don't think they're ever going to get rid of it. But um, get a VPN. That guy will try DDoS attacks. I don't know what DDoS attacks is, but Cuddles, if you have an Instagram, hit me a direct message at Team Swartz or uh, email me at Team Swartz Media at gmail.com and let me know what ddos attacks means or maybe i can just google it but i, I have been looking at vpn services not gonna lie i might even have the tab open on my computer i started looking at it the other day oh disruption of service attacks mm. Mm. yeah i'm gonna have to do some research i don't know how detrimental that could be but I'll have to look into it. I'll ask my um, my IT techs. Got you. I'll look it up, Julissa. All right. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. Love you. See you guys next week. Be good. Stay blessed. All that good stuff. D all the above. Have a good night. See y'all later. It's been real. It was a good stream. I liked it. I had a really good time. All right. See, see you later, Mr. Grapes. Appreciate you. Thank you, Diamond Hawkins and everybody else. Make you be. All right. Stay blessed. Be good. See you next time.